Sure to break, then I promised we are ready to go. And raring, I must say, you've got me, Ace of Pyrite, joined by Guz for this one. We are going to see a banger, I am certain, between Fury and Scars. The social prediction, kind of saying it all there. 5941, I think that's the closest that I've seen so far. Yeah, honestly, I think it's probably pretty reflective of this head to head. Yes, Fury got a win against the Falcons, but it was only a narrow 2-1 against an unfortunate you know, situation for the Falcons. They're a little bit battered and bruised at the moment. As for Scars, again, very tight series, just losing out to a difficult Sonic. So I think Scars probably still do just edge out as favourites, but only just. It's a really difficult prediction for me to sort of sit back and say, it's going to be this, because I'm just not too sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Sonics, I've looked at so far and I, I feel like they're doing really well, but I feel like they've got this incredibly high ceiling. I feel like they've got a lot more to come yet. It's just whether they can deliver it or not. You know, that's always the case. Um, but I feel like there's a, there's an awful lot to come from them. Um, looking back to this one, then Fury and Scars get us underway with some bands. I think that's the first Blitz band that I've seen so far at the tournament. Yeah, um, I... I don't know if that's a potential target ban onto Fury, of course, casting my own personal mind back to covering Asia. It's not like Blitz has been hugely prominent from memory. Dot could be to follow up, though, another, you know, global ban um, alongside Lion. Dot could be, though, the favoured ban in most departments. Solace as well to follow up one of the big defensive operators. Azami, also one of, I guess, the big four. That means that um, we will see, of course, the Fenrir, even Valkyrie to an extent, sneak through. But I think this veto sets us up quite nicely and leaves a couple of tools still up for the attack. Yeah, I think it's a good choice. Um, I saw, I'm pretty sure it was on um, Skyscraper that we saw it the other day. We saw, oh no, it was actually on Shally, but I will, I'll make the same, uh, the same observation because it's, uh, the, the logic tracks is, um, we saw the Fenrir, but, uh, sorry, not the Fenrir band, the Tuberau band um, on Shally, but again, I'd say the same for Skyscraper. There just isn't that huge hard break in need necessarily on Skyscraper. So I think Solus and Azami, they're going to be much more impactful um, potentially here on Skyscraper. So we're going to get things underway. It's round one. We've got Scars kicking us off on the defense. They're going to take us 2T and karaoke. So we're likely to see one of two things from Fury. It's either going to be a little bit of a direct push towards site, which has been popular so far, getting in towards the top of Black Stairs, little bit of pressure on Geisha, which is what a couple of teams have missed. And then getting yourself into a plan in karaoke. Alternatively, they get themselves set up in exhibition Five office and they sweep three. across that top floor and try to take out that extended hold as they go. Oh, we can see the Amaru tees there a little bit with the re-pick. Ultimately, though, like Paulus will settle for the Glaz. Still an opportunity to perhaps be a little bit more direct than hit top black. We'll see, of course, how Fury want to play this out. I think the big thing for me that stood out as a talking point for Fury v Falcons was just the pace of the game. And, you know, the to and fro with both teams trying to dictate the pace, whether it be really aggressive, direct, quick, or you know, slowing it down and trying to draw the opponent in. But that's something I'm keeping a keen eye on in this game because I feel like going in from the regions they're from and the history they have, both teams are probably going to want to be as proactive as possible to kick things off. And it's BGP Man over on the East Rappel to find the first. Yeah, he's going to pick up Peon and the positioning of Fury at the minute would suggest that it is going to be that Geisha Blackstairs tick. And Dark has moved in underneath into bathroom. Tayu's going to come under pressure on these Blackstairs, I would imagine, pretty soon. They've got one on Rappel of the balcony as well. He's looking to get aggressive here. Will be taken down by the air jab, and that's just going to give the opportunity for the Nomad to Rappel onto the balcony, get feet on the ground, and be in a position to challenge. But the bigger pressure for the Warden is likely going to be Dark trying to move from underneath. But perfect cover from Wreck there as he manages to slam Dark across the bottom floor. And that levels things up four to four. Yeah, Fish like holding the vault. So this is a position that you would need to try and pressure. Otherwise, this push is probably not going to work out. Reaching the halfway point of the round and like Cole is looking to shift position on the karaoke rappel. Keeping an eye on BG man as well. In the back of my mind, he has the diffuser in hand. Like Hollis now looking to aggress down below. Crit J also with the 417 drops wreck, of course. Key player for Scars. Only the one kill in this round, though. 
Pritchett, of course, a, a big name that you picked up on before um, the match, so I'm sure that they'll be glad to see him getting going, and that's a double for him as well, so certainly not slowing down from what we've seen previously. They haven't really dealt with was shy inside of Geisha, though, and PG Man gets taken down. Looks like he was unaware of Washoi's position as he went in through the window. 50 seconds left to go. We've got Washoi now down, but not out. He will not be collected. And it is up to Fishlike to try and close this out. 1v2. The Fuser, though, should have been spotted. So I think Fishlike will have a read as to where Fury will want to push. The attack, though, taking their own time and gathering some information. Unfortunately, though, for Crit Jake, he's slain. And now I9 left in the one versus one. Old Intel. And he's chasing Fishlike's tail back through Geish. I've just got to wonder whether he's going to take the opportunity to pick his teammate up here now that it's a 1v1. I don't think he's going to push his luck. No, Fishlike keeps himself in drum. He can play for time now, 15, 15 seconds. seconds. If he gets about another 10 seconds out of this, then he can just look for that plant going down. But I9's well. not even going to make a move towards the diffuser. He's not going to go and get it. He knows he doesn't have time. He's chasing Five the kill. Well. I think he knows where it is. But look at that for a crucial F not. However, it just doesn't stop him. I9, even with without vision manages to get around the corner and find the kill he just seen the foot oh. he just seen the foot before the cloud of the f not descended and it was enough to tell him where fish like was and fury they snatch around from the jaws of defeat <laughs> i don't think fenrir is that strong of an operator ace i think he's it's fine. I don't see what the problem what do you mean? You could just shoot, shoot it through the, the mist. Wow, what a round that was. Uh, a bit all over the place from both teams initially. Uh, Black Stairs got a little bit messy, traded out. The Fuser, of course, then put on that island over towards Isha. Fish like tried to play a little bit safe. Didn't go for the revive, which perhaps was to his demise. There was probably a window where he could have gone for it. But either way, not the case. Fury with a nice clutch for the first round. I think Fury got caught up a little bit in that 2v1. Um, just kind of, I was, I was a little bit concerned for them. They were both over at Black Stairs. They were kind of stacking up, and I just wondered, you know, there was a, a different timeline there where Fishlight pops both of them, you know, at the top of Black Stairs. Instead, he only gets one. They managed to create a little bit of separation. Um, but yeah, brilliant turnaround for Fury, realistically. In the absolute nick of time there. I9, only about five seconds left on the clock, I think, when he managed to find that one. So that's going to see Scars deciding they're not going to double down on T and Karaoke. They've lost it there. They're going to head on over this time to exhibition and office and i think scars are employing a pretty aggressive setup so footholes on the main breach mirror facing that position second mirror into t as well to try and negate the lurk potential for fury on that side of the map to the south as well to the west rather initial pressure though on the single wall and it's the combination of the map and the fair light to confirm that they're pretty easy going but as mentioned the main breach is quite an aggressive hold from the defense, so arguably that one will be a little bit more challenging to open up if Fury so wish to do so. Yeah, that's it. Not too much of an opportunity for the bandit of Fishlight to do anything about that one, but also not the end of the world um, that the VIP wall has been open. So, like always, just running around, still one exothermic in pocket. Um, opposite side of the map now, looking to work across from Geisha potentially, um, which just makes me flick my eyes through. We've got the ace of Crit J, so there is the potential still to work on the main breach should they choose to, but he's not really um, immediately in position to do that either. So it looks like the office breach for the time being at least will remain intact um, and the push instead is going to come from karaoke and T. So Sam was then deployed from Crit Day on that mirror window, again facing in towards T and that just makes the rector position now slightly compromised. Fish like looking to counter the breach on Geish facing in to drum the through the holes created by PG Man that doesn't find much. You see the attack now just chipping away at utility, trying to chip away at the defense, but Rek responds nicely and opening kill on the Crit J. The two impact players going toe to toe while Shoy gets in on the action, but immediately falls. Dark find that one. 60 seconds on the clock, and Fury still trying to find this control safely. That's it, not really comfortable um, in charge of this top floor. And given that Scars have now got that man advantage with only a minute left to go, they can just be a little bit more flexible with leaving players like Fishlike, for example, out in drum to continue challenging BG man does manage to take him down but once again scars there for the trade Tayu managing to lock up BG man and leave it still at a three versus two about 30 seconds left to go and it just feels a little bit like Fury stalling out here goes the 
Like all this over onto that office breach is a little bit late to be worrying about that. You've got such little time left. You've you know, going to have to really move around. I think he's looking to apply pressure from site window, if anything, because he just doesn't have time to deal with that wall. He's just going to have to go in and look for kills here, surely. And he needs Dark in support to push forward. But no, the goo mine is going to be everything that Scars need to keep that locked up. Dark shut down in Dragon. And that is going to be the round going to Scars. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm a little bit surprised that Fury put all their cards on the table, like laid them out on the table over towards T and fully committed to that push as opposed to, you know, trying to split it a little bit, maybe play off the single breach, work house stairs, obviously trying to work double breach on the site as well. They just all fully fledged over towards T. And sure, they, you know, they, they got the key walls open, they deal with the mirror windows pretty nicely, but they didn't win the trade game. And then playing at the disadvantage, playing from behind, always a challenge. And the last 30 seconds, they were never going to win the round. They didn't have the diffuser in hand over towards Drum. They didn't have, you know, the positions needed to capitalize on the info in sight that they did actually have. So it was a little bit messy from Fury, but to the credit of Scars, they had an expansive defense. They played into it nicely and they respond. I think one of the ways I always look at it when I finish a round and I think, how difficult was it? How under threat did the players in sight feel? And that gives me an indication. That's like a little barometer for how successful the attack was. And I think in that situation, you've got to say, Scars were not bothered. They were unfazed. <laughs> you know, they were in Five their lane. Up. They were happy enough inside. At no point did any of those Scars players, two or three of them, inside, come under any pressure whatsoever. So really, the attack from Fury, just lacking some teeth there, never really got a grip into the round. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that you bring up. And again, casting my mind back to the Fury Falcons game, a lot of the attacks that Fury did not convert were often a similar story where they weren't even pressuring the site in the end. A lot of it crumbled on the exterior, whether that be getting some map control or throwing a couple pieces of utility. They might lose a pick or a there or untraded and... Yeah, it's like they've it got difficult. the right idea. They know mm. they need to clear out that extension, but they kind of stall doing it and then never actually get to that final point. So maybe I'd like to see them just go route one, just straight to site. Let's open it up. Let's put some immediate pressure because if you do that, that extension kind of deals with itself sometimes because those players have to return to site. Um, you know, so it may be something that Fury could consider, but we will see whether they choose to or not as we continue. It's going to be round three. We're a minute in. It's kitchen and barbecue this time that Scars have gone to. So, Again, holding similar locations upstairs, not really wanting to give up too much vertical inside of Geisha, Drum and Karaoke, wanting to, to lock those areas down. And again, that's an extension that Fury are going to have to deal with this time. Yeah, so Shotgun's in play this time around from I-9. So goes without saying, has the ability to gain information, but can also deal with the mines from Fenrir as well. Getting close to the halfway point of the round, and Geisha now opened up for the second. Dream was showing immediately under pressure from the double window repel, but able to resist that at least initially and forced back a little bit to play a more defensive position as I9 look to continue to chip away at that utility. Fish likes looking to aggress now through drum. If he can maybe catch an attacker off guard, it will be worth it. But Crit J again head to head with Brack and he wins it out on that occasion. Good for two. Fish like trying to trade, but doesn't land the shots. Yeah, Fury this time doing a much better job of getting in there, getting the entry, and starting to clear out that top floor. Pion managing to get the kill onto I-9. They're going to need a little bit more of that yet because Fury still have the advantage and they have access to the top floor pretty much. Now there's one player left up there to be cleared out. And good night, was Shoy as Crit J finds him through the barricade. Now, Fury, take this round by the horns, get involved. You've got your top floor, move with confidence, get some verticals. You've got 30 seconds, you need to get moving. Yeah, and they have the tools required, no doubt. So from this point, it should be relatively smooth sailing. Like Colas with the drone down below, looking to see if he can find a little bit of information to help with the push. And we'll see if Fury can close this out cleanly. Use it in the hands of Crit J, Paiute on site. That's one in a map, that's Crit J. Ten seconds now, and he's able to find a second. Good for two. Is he good for three? He is. Can he get all four? Oh my word! How the hell has he pulled that off? 
Tayo just absolutely smashing it at the end of the round there. And again, it comes down to the clock. Fury got in. They got the top floor control, but it was just too late. Two and a half minutes into the round it was. And then they would reduce to just dropping a hatch direct into sight. Realistically, they want to be 30 seconds ahead of where they were. If you've got a minute left on the clock, when you get that top floor, you can have one or two on the hatch, but you can start working down those stairs and work the lateral angles as well. But well held on by Scars. Let's not take anything away from them. Tayu cool under pressure. Picks one up on the frost mat on the window. And again, that comes down to time. Players launching themselves in three windows. No time to check. They've just got to go for it. But tell you what, those frost mats really do win rounds. <laughs> I mean, even in their current state, right? Yeah. Where uh, they're arguably weaker. Obviously, attackers can now pull themselves out despite the you know, obviously still being debuffed. But yeah. Had the impact it needed in that round. And yeah, cool, calm, and collected in the clutch. Ten seconds remaining. Frustrating for Fury. And again, as we mentioned a couple times in the pre-show, attacking Five rounds come at such search. a premium that you cannot be affording to allow opportunities like that go Attackers astray. That could prove to be a very costly round. There is, again, a world in which one attacking round into a second could be hugely influential. And they've just wasted that opportunity. Exactly. Well, you can look at it. You've got your, your defensive rotation there of your three sites that Scars are going to use. Fury managed to actually beat them on their primary site. You know, they then had a chance at their third choice site. That's the one you've really got to pick up normally. So, you know, as far as Scars are concerned, the fact that they've picked up that third choice site sort of fixes that problem, that mistake that was made in the first round. And now they just get to go again. Um, and it's thinking back to the first round, of course, they lost this site, T and Karaoke. Uh, it was a lot of black stairs, attention coming in from Fury. It did come down to a 1v1 at the end, so I'm sure Scars are going to be fairly confident that they can get this done. So the Valkyrie played them for round number four, and I9 once again on drone duty. This time transitioning from the Twitch to the Brava, so he'll be able to hack that information alongside the Fenrir's as well as the Mute Jammers and get some Magnets as well, if required. Crit J meanwhile over towards Toilet IQ, back with nades in hand, good to see. And of course can help clear some utility if required. And said utility plastered over towards the top black position. Once again, you see the warden stationed there behind a deployable. Last time it was actually traded out relatively effectively by a few. And we'll see how they go uh, this time. Wreck once again in on the action, but Crit J breathing down. His neck will find the trade at the halfway point. It's a 4v4. Yeah, not too bad so far. Relatively even spoils um, in terms of the entry to a piece now. Uh, Wreck being the only one to collect them for scars. Uh, but as you say, that advantage wiped off the board pretty quickly. Um, looking at Fury, again, not making sort of rapid progress. We're two minutes in. Pion is still lodged in Geisha, not been dealt with yet. Still has those lines to start through into karaoke, which wipes out any hope of putting a diffuser down until he has been moved from there. And with now 55, 50 seconds left to go. I just wonder how Fury are going to take control of that essential area of the map. Yeah, well, Diffuser's in the hands of White Polis. He's the one playing the karaoke repel, repel currently. So if you need to work around that, try and find a way to facilitate his entry towards the objective. Pop flat control crucial, and they'll work on that now. Like, Polis just swings in. That's the kind of aggression that will be rewarded, and now he can think about getting in a position to get the plant down. Yeah, Pion can't lose that gunfight. As I said, that Asia area is such a critical um, position to be able to stop this plant going down, which now they can't do. Like, all is sticks it successfully. I-9, couple of kills. Fish like taking serious damage. Shut down from the stairs. It's Crit J to finish it off. But what a great attack from Fury. And it came down to that linchpin. Pion not able to hold on around those Geisha boxes. Was stood there and just got absolutely slammed by Like, all is coming in through that window on the repel. You cannot lose that fight because you see what happens to the rest of the round. Whilst he's there, they cannot plant inside of karaoke, but as soon as he's gone, that diffuser, it starts going down. Yeah, very well said. I uh, totally agree. Once you unlock that position, it's uh, pretty simple to get the plant down in combination with top black control as a defender, you can't make that cross to deny the plant and it was reinforced off, so you can't get the angle the from top the or drum the either. So, it looks like we're settling into perhaps a, a close map here, even a close series as well, as these two continue to trade rounds. Into five we go, and over to Exhibition for this one. 
And I'm not quite sure how to feel about this one so far. It's one of those, again, like I mentioned. They're just trading rounds. I it's a toss of a coin, to Yeah, be they're both kind of feeling each other out at the moment. It feels yeah, very different, left. again, to Yuri's previous game that I covered, where it was very clear-cut, decisive rounds where Fury knew exactly what they wanted to do, Fox knew exactly what they wanted to do. Sometimes they clashed and you know, one team would obviously win out because of the pacing and the compositions brought. Whereas this time around, it's a little bit more difficult to have that sort of read. Uh, right, here we go then. It's going to be 2-2 two -two so far. Nothing really to separate these two teams as we head on into round five. Back to office and exhibition and scores, regardless, um, will move on. No surprise, they've lost that site twice now, T and Karaoke, um, so they're not too keen to hold on. I think the Selma, the first one at least, will detonate, and then the EMP will sort out the second level, so that will now be accessible. BG Man just holding a very tight pixel, but Fishlight manages to pop out and you gotta say I don't think Fury had any idea he was there that's gotta be an error in the drone in yeah the element of surprise pays dividends for scars and if you're attacking on skyscraper at Amanda's advantage especially this early on it's going to be a challenge Valkyrie cameras peppered around feeding information to the defense and unlike previous rounds Fury not playing the twitch not playing the Brava so this could be a challenge to deal with especially with no IQ on the board, there's a fair chance that Fury are not going to find these camps. No, Fishlike's doing a great job out there as well, just holding that position. Look how much time he's wasting. He's just peppering shots here and there, keeping himself safe. And that's almost half of the round done. And the kill to boot as well. He's getting a little bit of support from Caillou inside of Drum as well. Out goes the Nitro unsuccessfully. But again, it's just keeping that Fury push at bay for the time being got the push onto Shrine Window, but not quick enough to challenge Rashoi after that air jab detonates. Well, the pacing then will just slow down a fraction. Lion scan to come through and Dark to take some ground. Contact follows, spots the shoulder. Orbit engagements all over the place. The air jab coming into play as well. I-9 though, able to win that duel. Four versus four, minute on the clock. Fury can get themselves back into the round. I asked that same question um, again here, and that is what pressure has been felt by the defenders on site? And the answer is absolutely none. All these fights are coming across in T and Karaoke, only now just about pushing into Shrine and Dragon. There's been no pressure whatsoever on three players on the side of Scars. Tayu, Pion, and Rec have basically seen yeah, nothing so far in this round. And that's fine by them because they're holding on to site. They're the anchors. Four versus three. Dark manages to pick up wreck but still with only 25 seconds left to go there is so much work for fury to do here and what they're likely to find is now they're just pushing in they're getting aggressive and they're just going to take death after death yeah you can get your kill onto fish like but it's out in geisha it's nowhere near the site it's not where you want to be and so dark he has to start taking risks to make this happen and tayu is just poised ready he sees the barrel of the gun that's one that's two easy clean up and again scars in office exhibition put under zero pressure Really. Yeah, too linear there from Fury. Fish like should never be allowed to hold that position for so long. And I think it was about 20 seconds. It was on like the, two and a half minutes 20, he was in there. Yeah, and then there's like what, 20 seconds on the clock team and they're only just clearing him and arguably probably wasn't even a favorable engagement yet they wanted out. Then of course they just walk you straight into a crossfire, never gonna win the round, but yeah, very, very strange. Um, Honestly, at that point, they'd have probably been better off just leaving Fishlike, ignore him, push towards that really down. aggressively and try and pick him up when he comes for the flying. Yeah, that, that, 100%. It would have been the better option, surely. Yeah, for sure. So much time burnt over that one. Kitchen and barbecue then will be the final uh, defensive round for Scars. Interesting to see that Frost Matt has gone under the kitchen window again. Um, not sure that it's going to get any job, Joy Tayu. I'm going to be honest with you. You've already caught one with it. You've got to move your bait around. You can't keep it in one spot. Um, but I say that, and I've done it twice in a row before now in ranks, so who knows? The, the, the classic double bluff. Surely, We've all been it again. Surely it won't be there again. Yeah. Chung. Can Fury even out the half? Because again, I feel like three rounds. This meta, this map, probably okay. You can work around that defensively and it will be a decent confidence builder. That said, they're already at two. So you could almost make the argument, right? That this is a bit of a free shot, especially on the tertiary site. So we'll see if they can tidy things up. Last time, they were in a great spot to convert. It just came down to the last five seconds where they absolutely threw it. I-9 once more, back on the Brava. Looking to find as much util as possible, and there's plenty available. 
combination with the IQ, if the communication between those two is sound, could weaken the defense of Scars quite significantly. Yeah, absolutely. Targeting um, exactly which utility the Bravo drone wants to pick up um, and feeding that information through the comms. Just looking uh, to get a little bit of pressure on from the house side to begin with. I-9 opening up there, sending in the drone. And again, like you say, just going to be looking for that utility. Out goes the default cam, um, but out goes the drone as well. Oh, the torch getting to work again. We saw a pretty similar approach there over towards B Sharp last time around. And it's Washoi to play contact close by. Secondary hard breach utilized by the Grim of Lycolas. So that's the wall open up elsewhere. Dark taking a lick of damage, but he'll be able to survive that engagement. Again, it's just a little bit all over the place at the moment. Everyone getting a bit of a feel. Fury, of course, trying to gather information. Continuing to clear utility. Deployable shield spotted the shrine. Dealt with, though, set quite soundly by the attack. And that forces the shield back. And that defense slowly getting pressured back towards the objective. Crit J, sharp shot. Fish like falls. Had no opportunity to respond. Will the trade from Wreck land, though? He's now found himself in a bit of a pinch. Absolutely fantastic job from Crit J to begin with. Oh. But the cover is there. Peon moving in and just wreck oh, acting as the bait there, dragging his man into position. And Peon, sh Peon shuts him down for what is a late trade there. Four versus four, a minute left on the clock. And again, not enough progress towards sight directly from Fury. Yeah, where's that pressure going to come from onto the objective itself? Because at the moment, certainly lacking. I believe Lycolis is posturing outside the kitchen window again. Hopefully, this time around, he'll clear the Frost Knight entry. Taiyu close by. Lycolis in the map, clearly down. It is going to go for the plant. Is the coverage there from Fury? Does Taiyu even know the plant's going down? He does eventually. He can't deny, and Fury will stick. Bit of a problem, especially if he gets out of this window. No, he doesn't. Tayu manages to cut down like all this wreck onto Dark. Four versus two. They've got the numbers. Three versus two as I-9 starts to fight back. But that is a huge loss as Peon manages to find him with the shotgun. Three versus one now. BG man, low health. Not in a position to deny this disable attempt on the diffuser. Peon's going to stick it. And that is going to be the sixth round going over to Scars. What a great retake from them. Tayu unable to do anything about the plant going down, but did everything that he needed to by taking out the planter afterwards. Yeah, I think that's one of those instances where like Hollis probably does make a pretty you know, opportunistic play. And because Fury are often so far removed from the actual objective itself, they were not in a position to actually aid and assist, or even be in a position to help ward off the retake, right? I don't think they had much pressure over towards main. That's why Geish was then occupied in the post and just a little you know, combination of errors like that made it very challenging despite the diffuser going down to still win the round. So we sit at 2-4. Again, probably the benchmark, if not probably maybe even exceeding it depending on how the match plays out. So I don't think Fury can be all too upset. But again, back-to-back -back kitchen attacks that arguably could have been theirs. And if that was the case, imagine a 4-2 their way. That would have been pretty insane. Exactly. You know, moving on to the defense, yeah, we'd be talking about this in very different terms now. But um, as you say, Stars, have, they've done the minimum that they needed to do on the defense, uh, but they've got the job done. This is going to be a really important round. It's coming quite early in the match. It's usually, you know, maybe a couple of rounds time that you start seeing those pivotal score lines. But if Stars can take this and get themselves 5-2 and send a message that the attack is on for them, uh, then it could mean trouble for Fury, especially on on their own map given that they were the ones to pick skyscraper so for the time being scars they are posturing they're poison they're getting themselves where they want to be and it looks like it's going to be a bit of pressure out towards office and exhibition um, to push across this top floor Reload. yeah i am quite intrigued to see what pacing is going to look like here from scars because again reflecting on the first half from fury they weren't often all too slow in, in map entry and, you know, getting peripheral control, but actually attacking site was, you know, quite slow on multiple occasions. So we'll see for Scars what their pattern ends up looking like. Obviously, they have the operators like the Ying, for instance, if they want to be a bit more direct, especially through the late round. Tubrow, an interesting pick as well. 
And I'm intrigued to see how they play into it on the extension at the moment. Yeah, this is it. Um, just looking through, they've of course got the, the Electro Bros, as they become known, Kaid and Bandit, um, both on the board. So there is going to be opportunity for further denial as well, and Tuberau can really slow that down. So Fury taking a slightly different approach to the defence um, than we saw from Scars, like always, managing to pick up Washoi. And that is not a good start for Scars here. Needing to get themselves inside the map. They're still not really established. There's two Romas for Fury over on that exhibition and office side and Scars have done nothing really to move them so if they are then trying to adjust and look at Gage to look at top black they're still going to have that extension to deal with as they come back through. Well, Fish like finally pounces and he finds his mark in dark. Traded out though. Crick J on the boost with the DMR in hand. Wreck elsewhere though has cracked into Keisha and he's good for one. Drop I9. Caillou has the Fuser in hand, it sort of got a little bit of sight control here, and Scars might be able to work with this, two versus one, Crit J now is having to work back in off the roam, there could be an opportunity, no, the flashbangs come out, the damage is taken, oh. and there is the kill, Crit J, 1v1 now against Wreck, who finds two? Wreck blasting through the drum, but cannot find his target, Crit J wins it out, with a fraction of health remaining, and what a last few seconds, Seconds that was. Well, I tell you what, clutches it with the pistol in hand. A bold decision, but pays off. A big round win there from Fury because Scars were able to, to split the defense. They hit site pretty directly through Geish to Karaoke. A great double from Wreck, but couldn't it? Couldn't follow it up with a third. Good attempt. Attackers need to locate a tricky one. Many bombs as they can. Doesn't convert, and for Fury, that's going to be you know a round that riles up the troops a bit. When the double flashbang came Crit J's way, I thought they were going to try and take the opportunity to get a plant down because I thought, you know, you've sent him back into drum, you can cover that one door. If you plant over on karaoke wall, even if he rotates round to T and you don't have it covered, he's not going to get there in time. So you, you know then from Geisha, all you need to do really is cover drum's door and you, you're going to get your plant down. But they made the choice, they made the call, they were going for kills, um, and Crit J just played it beautifully, really. He just, you know, he didn't have much of a choice. He had to be aggressive, he had to go for it but you picked up on Crit J before we even started today and he's you know proving exactly why 11 and 5 at the minute talisman player for the team uh, making good choices winning good gunfights and closes out a nice 1v2 it's always nice when you highlight a player and instead of cursing them they actually <laughs> perform right so yeah it's been a good start from him yeah, you've got to be careful with those cast the curse powers oh, you have to wield them very cautiously I mean, Rex doing okay, 7-5. There's been a lot of opening duels between the two. It's going to be far too late as the electrical goes on and the wall will be opened. I think it was wishful thinking from Lycolis. I can tell you now if the exothermic has started, it is too late for the, uh, the electrical to activate before it detonates. Um, so we've got the Valkyrie on board as well. We haven't seen too much impact from the Valk so far uh, in the game, but of course those black eye cameras always um, have the opportunity to, to really open up the round. We're going to have the main breach open up as well. I like this from Scars. We didn't really see it from Fury. Again, an electrical just thrown into the thrown into the ether really. <laughs> yeah. Definitely has sent those claws with a prayer, but they weren't answered. Bit of nook in play. An interesting operator that doesn't really fit too much these days. No, certainly sin yeah, certainly sin not drop off a lot when the you know with the changes to the nades particularly. Yeah, nade nerf. Primary I think got a nerf not too long ago either. Makes it a little bit challenging. Flashes to come quiet. through and there's pressure now on the likes of Crit J. The bees swarming around, his position I'm sure pinged out. But there's not really anyone that can capitalize on that info. I get a little bit frustrated with that. I've, I've said this already um, during this tournament. When you, I, I see it, when you're sending utility in like that, I, I see it like you're spending it. So what are you getting for it? You know, you go into a shop, you give them some money, you want something in return, go, they're going in there, they've got nothing for it. They've sent some bees in, they've sent a candela in, and they've got nothing for it. And the reason they've got nothing for it is they've not asked for anything. They've not gone in and tried to get anything. They do manage to get three kills elsewhere, though, the scars. So, one way or another they are getting it done in this round and that is going to leave like all this down as well and in a one versus five could have been a flawless round i9 can stop that at least but tayu's getting that diffuser down unlikely i9 can do anything here tries a little bit of distraction with the impact here but it's not going to work downs one can he find any more 
probably a stat pad at this point. And it's tie you to confirm the round. Now, I totally agree with your analogy in terms of they were just donating Util to the charity of Fury, but you, still they made it work. They made it work. They made it work. But I'm always a little bit frustrated, especially with something like a Candela that flashes people out for so long. I'm like, get in behind it. Why are you not pushing behind it? You know, you need to follow in with a little bit more. Uh, you know, the Grim, I appreciate the bees. It can just be to stop him pushing through back into VIP. You know, yeah, it stops his movement. But the Candela going in, get in behind it and get the kill. So a Fury tactical time out as these two trade rounds in the second half. Don't mind this, you know, taking the opportunity to reset after a defensive loss. Again, knowing that these rounds are absolutely crucial. I do wonder what they'll be talking about. I feel like they'll probably be a little bit disappointed in that last round and probably just looking to consolidate going forward because, again, the util game from Scars, at least from what we saw from our POV, was not amazing. So they've clearly slipped up in other parts of the map and, you know, given those ins to Scars who, you know, to their credit, despite having an unfortunate result against Sonic, are still a high quality team that will, you know, punish mistakes elsewhere. Yeah, they're in a little bit of a wobbly position now, I think, of Fury. Um, they've got uh, a situation whereby one more attack goes uh, in the direction of Scars and they're all of a sudden feel it fe facing map point on their own map, which is certainly not going to be ideal for them. It's down to Kitchen and Barbecue this time. Um, so much like Scars, they, they are uh, insistent on going through their defensive rotation, whether they win or lose the sites, they have moved on each time. Um, and this time they're going to be keeping hold of that. Now, again, Scars, I've said it previously they're going to want to get into geisha and karaoke particularly okay, for this go. kitchen barbecue site i'd like to see that done uh, fury didn't really do it with enough time to spare i'd like to see scars maybe do it a little bit quicker and we can start to see that verticality used they've got the sledge in the hands of washo they've got the tools that they need get in there and use them i must say it's a little bit unfortunate that at the tournament where said team lifts the hammer to win sledge is not a particularly popular operator <laughs> yeah. at the moment which is sad to see. Do we give him the nades back? Probably not. Do Probably we wouldn't make a difference now, would it? <laughs> I, do, I, I think. I think. Yeah. I think that would, uh, that ship has sailed at this point. Um, Two speed. That's the answer. Yeah. That's always the answer. You want to see somebody pick more? Make them faster. <laughs> it's always the answer. Or give him a 1.5. Either way. Well, IQ in play then round nine. We've seen a decent amount of IQ play in response, especially to the Valkyrie and its I9 to play at this time around. This and oh, some nicely positioned cameras there. Um, just uh, I always like the ones that are, I said this the other day on stream. I think if you can get them behind where somebody's going to come in, behind where their focus is going to be placed, they're the ones that survive. Unless I've got IQ. Unless they've got IQ. <laughs> then it's not ideal. Um, but again, you know, you've got to rely on that operator doing the job Rec is doing, going in and identifying those black eye cameras and just pinging them out for his team so they can be dealt with. Um, but it is uh, going to be an important part of the round that they find all three, really, because they don't want to be suffering through that information throughout the round. So Grim once more for Scars. Last time we were a little bit critical of their ability to play off that info. Currently, those bees are going to out drum the like Polis down below. Opportunistic Nitro. That will find Wreck. Only a down. There's an opportunity, perhaps, for Scars to pick them back up. But like Hole is watching closely down below and Dark not too far away to play coverage. Yeah, this is it. Uh, Fury won't have any idea necessarily that the, the player has been down there. Of course, they don't have the same markers um, necessarily that you would in ranked, but like always, does manage to pick up Wreck. And so that is going to give them at least an early advantage here on the defense, Fury. They do manage to keep this tight one way or another. Every time Scars win around, Fury seem to come back with one of their own. So it's at least stopping Scars getting too far ahead of them. But we're sure he manages to take out Dark. Levels things at four versus four. Continues to try push. Pushing I9 has to drop back down to site. Was Shoy taking a lot of damage, enough to go down but not out? And Crit J will not be moved out of gold bars. Heading into this round, Fury with their tactical timeout, so they will really want to get this one across the line. Scars go for the res. A three versus four, 20 seconds on the clock. The biggest thing for Scars 
is that timer. Are they able to convert this round with a beginning to dwindle? They could be facing the same problem that Fury did when attacking onto this site, and that is going to be a lack of seconds on the clock. Ten of them left to go. They need to find a kill. It's not going to happen as like all this and I-9 double up. Two versus two, five seconds to go. BG Man and I-9 clean up. They are unable to deliver the diffuser to site, and Fury, they lock out a defense, keep things tight. It's 5-4. Well, they convert the tack, which is always a positive time, the biggest enemy for scars. They're in the wars a bit, trying to uh, transition control across drum, where players kept falling. Revived ultimately, but yeah, time became such a critical problem for them in the round. And I-9 did a great job. Obviously, then those in sight alleviated of some pressure as those attackers forced to sprint into the objective with no other option really available. Round 10 though, back to karaoke. And we'll see if Fury can build a bit of momentum now. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, that's what Fury need. Um, looking back through, they have at no point during this game chain two rounds ago. Um, it's been single rounds every single time they've won one. And so it just, I think when you're playing like that, it just really halts your momentum every time. You get one, you lose again. You get one, you lose again. Five Whereas by contrast, left. Scars have had the opportunity back round five, six to chain a couple back to back and Attackers feel like the confidence that you will gain from that is uh, is no doubt substantial. So Fury, they could well do with just getting this one locked down. It's their primary site choice. They chose this in their first defensive round, round seven, and they won it. This is the opportunity opportunity for them to level things up, get a bit of momentum, and try to push on and win their map. So the buck in play then for round 10, and Wreck with the free play screen, Bot Black is looking to aggress, but gets slain. I-9 with the superior shotgun, good for one. Perhaps a little bit unfortunate that he doesn't find the second, but Washoi with a composed trade leaves us in the 4v4. Yeah, and it's a big position to lose, really. Um, Blackstairs, we've seen a lot of the pushers come in there. Pion, Washoi, Fishlike, all stacking up, ready to try and get in there. They've got the Monty as well. I'm a little bit unsure why the Monty's not quite in the map yet. Need to get working. Washoi is stood on those stairs at the minute and could be in danger as BG Man is looking in that direction. So they really need to get that shieldy boy inside um, and just start putting a bit of pressure onto these defenders. Yeah, not a particularly atypical attack here from Scars, so Fury should be able to read into this. BG, man, nice shot, good read. Perhaps, though, an oversight there from Washoi and the rest of Scars. Finally, the Monty crosses, but probably a case of too little, too late. Yeah, I feel like the, the movement on the Monty's just been a little bit weak there. If he moves out, there'll be a shot comes in. They know the Tuberau's there. We're sure he's still alive, and you're in a much better situation, but Peon just very tentative about getting inside. Still, though, all hope is not lost just yet for Scars. And we'll see if they can leverage the Monty through a mid to late round. But it's going to be a challenge as Tyu rotates now. Bottom staircase. Still quite mindful of the flank, despite double claymore down. EG man still in prime position to deny these positions. And we'll see if he can find more. Yeah, this is it. The Monty has got what they need to get inside a site. Smoke canister will be deployed. Pion's going to work the way in. Um, Fishlight taking some damage, though, and that is not ideal. Pion might have had an opportunity to get the diffuser down, but he's not going to risk it. It falls apart as it's three versus one now for Fury. And it's all up to Tayu. You can just see the footers come off the gas, just trying to peek around, get anything going that they can, but unlikely to happen here as Fury are playing this smart. They've dipped themselves back. They know they don't need to overly challenge this Tayu chasing them round manages to get one onto dark surely this isn't doable one versus three becomes one versus two but time is a problem and bg man catches Tayu in the reload shuts him down and levels things out five five yeah that kind of attack needs to be almost perfect if you make a small mistake it can snowball and just really turn uh, upside down because there's no real contingency plan from the attack there um, obviously the Monty, the positioning perhaps a little bit off and the timing as well, not quite synced with the rest of the push. Exposed the hole. BG man, I believe it was right on the boost, was able to find that initial pick and then it kind of just snowballed from there. So a tactical timeout now from Scars. I will use their one and only 5-5 five, five score line. And it very much feels like we are on the precipice of a very, very close finish. Certainly does. Um, no surprise to see Scars just bringing in the tight timeout. They know that they're close. 
I think that, you know, it's, it's that sort of the blood's in the water. You can smell it. They're two rounds away. They think, oh, we just need that little bit. Um, so, you know, maybe the tactical timeout will be the difference maker for them. It'll be the boost that they need. Um, but at the minute, Fury stringing two rounds together on the defence. They've got exhibition and office to go to, which is another good site. Um, and you just feel like if anybody's going to get this map point opportunity at the minute, it feels like it's probably going to be Fury. Yeah, we've seen like stairs be you know, quite critical in this match and for the most part the defense has actually struggled to hold it quite a bit and I thought at that point in time with that sort of tick off the checklist that it was actually going to be quite positive for Scars but you know, the rest of it couldn't be strung together and as I mentioned okay, before I right, even greater emphasis of it in this kind of matter if you put a foot wrong in the attack against a defensive team that knows what they're doing, you can find yourself in a British drive very, very quickly. And it's difficult to then get yourself back into the round. Think about a map like Skyscraper in particular as well. It's yeah. very, very difficult yeah, without the ability to flush out positions with multiple attackers. This is it. And it, it it's small margins that we're talking about. You know, these mistakes that we're talking about are very, very small, uh, generally speaking. But like you say, a defensive team that's on its game, that's playing well, is going to take advantage of them, especially at this sort of level. So Fury definitely able to do that in the last round. So heading into round 11, it will, as I suggested, be office and exhibition that Fury will move across to defend. Um, and Scars immediately heading towards the balcony on that side. Uh, last time there was a lot of battling over over on the T and karaoke side as well. We've seen that consistently from attackers uh, heading towards this site so far in this game. Oh. How about that? Like Lycolis takes a double shot out of the barricade. First one opens the line of sight. Second one opens up Washoi. That's one way to get an entry. Certainly the most unconventional that we have seen in this match so far. And that's going to be frustrating for Scars and on the attack trying to stall out the momentum that's starting to build for Fury of course the last few rounds going their way the only two consecutive rounds that Fury have been able to gather in the match thus far if I tell you what if they're able to get three straight the third side will be perhaps a little bit more comfortable for them to be able to close out their pick it's all about leaning now into the Ying I feel to create space that of course Scar's conscious of the water on the other side yeah, that's it. VG Man just able to activate that gadget there, see through the smoke, see through the flash, um, and still be able to challenge onto that window. So something that Scars definitely need to be cautious of and take account of. Uh, we're just watching Dark there, who's currently sat inside a shrine and just uh, preventing any push coming across. Wreck is trying to work across from that far side, but just isn't having any joy at the minute. You can see the two players of Fury there just creating that defensive line and not allowing any movement. We've got... Beyond sort of crouch walking around downstairs, I think he's going to try and move up the drum stairs, but the door's barricaded anyway, so it's not really going to gain him much, and it is burning a lot of time. Yeah, I think at this point, Scar's sort of sending a bit of a Hail Mary, seeing if they can isolate a pick or two away from the objective, but Rick Bay Conscious able to move into a difficult position to clear. Rep will advance. Can he find the kill? Not initially. Shotgun now in hand, perhaps the worst shotgun in the game, and the prone peak there from Dark, good enough to find the kill. Swift trade, and it's a swift double from Fish Like, and it flips just like that. It's Fish Like all alone, low on HP, to try and ward off this match point. That's it, hits the reverse and sends it back in the other direction. Two versus one now, Fish Like with a, a sliver of health, and... Has to take out whatever utility you can find. 20 seconds as well, so time not really on his side either. And as suggested, it's looking likely that Fury are going to take this and give themselves the map point opportunity. It's going to take some real heroics here. Doesn't know that there's a man inside his sight. I-9 shuts him down, and that is going to be the round for Fury. They go on to six points. They go on to map point. Good work there from Fury around that... I mean, almost flipped the other way, out of nowhere, really. Scars, as mentioned, tried to go for a little bit of a Hail Mary and squeeze the defense, fish-like, through Shrine. Good work from him. Tyu as well got in on the action, but good composure from Fury, a team that can at times find it challenging to close out, you know, close rounds like that. Able to put the foot down, establish some authority. We go to Kitchen, which I tell you what, has probably been the most peculiar objective in the match so far, especially from the attack where time after time, the defense has done such a phenomenal job 
You're just leaning into the time and making it a yeah. challenge. That's it. It's, it's been a yeah, defensive stalwart so far, really. Um, as you say, the attack is just unable to get in there. I don't know. I feel like Scars have just been been broken a little bit over the last couple of rounds. Uh, you know, looking at that there, they had the two men trying to push across. Um, Dion and Rec trying to move across from karaoke T. Just didn't yeah, really like get three. anywhere until the last 15, 20 seconds. You know, yeah, they managed to get it down to sort of a 2v1, but it just, it was never really convincing. And again, didn't put Sight under any real pressure. Um, so let's see if they can move a little bit quicker. They've got the Monte. Get Peon in there. Start bullying these defenders. Get them moved. You know, you could really have top floor cleared within 60 to 90 seconds here and have that vertical control and then start seeing what you can do. I definitely remember you know, watching the documentary at the Atlanta Major for Scars. They are such a passionate team. They love playing Siege so much and they're going to be devastated if they get knocked out of the group stage here at SI. So this is where they really need to dig deep, push this game to OT, try their best in capturing a map in this series and give themselves an opportunity at all four points because it could be the difference maker for them. So we'll see if this time around they can be a little bit cleaner. Again, a lot of it is going to revolve around this top black position, but it's actually elsewhere where Tai Yu able to get the first. BG falls and Wreck is looking very, very hungry for a second. Certainly is uh, a good start for Scars. They still haven't dealt with this castle barricade though and we mentioned time at the beginning. We are 1 minute 15 into the round and still they haven't got into the top of Black Stairs where they want to. Wreck does manage to pick up I-9. I-9 was in a very key position last time. They won this defense so that is actually a really big kill clearing him out of there. That's going to allow that movement down Black Stairs in towards the restaurant, in towards the site. Definitely feels like maybe Fury of been a little bit overzealous in this round, trying their best to ward off the pressure from Scars, but it's only now compounded into a three versus five. Pune is still out the damn building, but it doesn't matter. A wreck able to find a second, and it's still against Fury, 2v5. Certainly not looking good for Fury right now. However, as I say that, Cast the Curse strikes. Dark and Crit J managed to pick up two. And that is going to leave us now in a two versus three. This just became a lot more doable. But Peon likely to go in sight and try and get this diffuser down. However, Fury do have the vert up above them and will be able to make challenges inside the smoke. They're going to go for the plant. Shield is on the back. Dark trying to challenge into restaurant. Is going to be beaten back. Tayu manages to get the kill. It's all up to Crit J above, the diffuser has been planted and it is now one versus three with an awful lot of work to do. Looks like he's just gonna use the bailiff to try and keep opening verticals, hope to find something, but what it has done is burn 15 seconds and they just keep ticking by. Unlikely, I think, at this point that Crit J does this. Just gonna have a look through the hatch, see if he can find anybody. He's gonna have to come down to a drop eventually. He's got 10 seconds to go and three kills to find as he comes down. Scars have played this smart. They're having absolutely nothing to do with it. Wreck, he manages to find it and we're going to overtime, Gus. Oh, it sounds so good. Wow. <laughs> oh, it warms my heart. Wow, I mean, it's still though, that objective just played out in such a strange fashion, right? Like It did. It's a 3v5. Even down to the two versus five, the Monty was still outside the damn building, which arguably should be the biggest piece of the attacking puzzle to help unlock top floor, apply pressure, flush the defense back towards the objective, and then work the vert. I mean, it didn't really matter in the end. Fury overpeaked. Scars kind of just sat there and waited for them with open arms and greeted them for the kill feed. And obviously time not an issue in the end. Did a vertical pressure, but that was dealt with. And yeah, over time we go. Yeah, we do. It's going to be the best of three rounds then, whoever comes away on top. Fury do have the defense, which we would argue um, there is a slight advantage in. It's been 4-2 in both halves. It enables them to go back to TM Karaoke, a site that they won twice in two attempts. So Scar's going to have to do something different than they did before if they want to get in there and get this win. And for me, I think if, you, if you're going to go from the black stairs, fine. But they've just got to be a bit more aggressive with it. They haven't brought the Monty this time, so they're maybe not going to try for that play. But if, you, you know, I'm just, if you're going in, then go in. Don't just keep hovering around that black stairs door. Get in, try and take some ground um, and get moving. But there is a possibility that they try to work the other way across. So, Tudorel will see a reappearance here from Fury and... 
I've got to say, its impact so far hasn't felt like it's been huge. But perhaps with Pine being a key proponent for a lot of these attacks, the Tuber can help stall out a little bit of that. We'll have to wait and see. Other operators not really standing out as being crazy. I will say, like, Horse probably needs to tidy up his work on the Kaid a little bit. Yes. Um, obviously, it was in response to Thermite previously, but not the case this time around. His role will be mitigated a little bit with just the Maverick available for Hardrick. Young looking for pressure on to Gershon. Also, there's somebody inside, but Crit J is going to take down Tayu, and what a start coming out for Fury there. Crit J, he's got about five minutes to get back inside of the map from there. Um, he's got quite, quite a jump and run, manages to get himself back inside of Closet, but what a double to pick up and get away with as well. Nobody from Scars able to do anything about that. So, what a start. Fury Fishlight manages to get himself inside of Exhibition and Office just getting aggressive but too aggressive as Dark manages to shut him down through the soft wall. I-9 onto Wreck. This could be a flawless round if we're sure you can't get anything going. And we haven't seen a whole Attackers bunch of ultra aggressive plays defensively and one's the one time you probably aren't expecting it if you're Scars. It's the first round of overtime where everyone's sort of a little bit tense traditionally. Crit J just says yeah stuff but I'll go for it. They're probably not expecting it. Hits the 2k. Round over. Easy as he'd like, 15 and 8. And I think for Scars, it's probably a good opportunity to uh, yeah, chill on this repel, have a sip of water, and refresh for the next round. Yeah, I think it's just about, you know, having that conversation. What's gone wrong there? How do we change it up? The problem being that they're on overtime. So, yeah, you can have that conversation, but how valid is it going to be for the next round? Because you're on defence. Really, what they're talking about here is round 15. You know, they're talking about, let's assume we win the defence. How do we win this next attack if we want to win this matchup? Um, so, they're going to be fairly confident, I'm sure, in locking down that defence. And they're, they're looking towards the fact, because they know which site they're likely to be on. They know that they're likely going to be attacking Exhibition Office should they get to round 15. Um, so, they can, you know, have a, a real game plan position then to go in and... Uh, see what they can do but for the time being just uh, holding on for the rest of the round and taking that opportunity to break it down and of course an opportunity for us to relax a little Reloading. bit as well and sort of review what's happened thus far he players continuing to step up so he's going on 15 i9 i I feel like we haven't been talking a whole lot about it. Not really it, mentioned it? I9 very much, but it's not just the fact that I9's on 14 kills. I9's had some really critical kills, real important moments, has picked up one or two, which has swung around. So, yeah, very, very good from I9. I mean, he's a, you know, a fantastic character in the Siege team. We've seen um, some great moments from him over the years and certainly continuing today. And probably a confidence booster for him too. I'm just looking mm. at the numbers. At Copenhagen, he was the, the top rated on Fury Monster points, uh, 0 3, but... At Atlanta, still a 0 0.9, pretty respectable CGG rating, but that actually placed him last on the team. So he's posting numbers here, good impact pills, as you mentioned, as well. And alongside Crit J, have made it quite challenging for Scars, who once again are trailing. Fury on the attack, of course, primary site, OT to kick things off. So Attackers we'll see if they're able to spot. close it out cleanly. No surprise to see Office and Exhibition being the first choice for Scars. I commented on it a number of times when they were defending. At no point were they really got under any pressure inside of Site by Fury. Um, so, yeah, I would agree that this will feel like the absolute strongest site that they have defensively because Fury just spent so much time fighting with them, uh, you know, around Brum, around Geisha, around T, just trying to get themselves across the map. There was two minutes 40 gone on the clock and they were still battling with people inside again. They, they know how much time that they can waste here. So... I really do think at this point that we're probably going to come down to this 15th round unless Fury can do something special here, which they didn't show us really on attack previously. Well, it's the exact same setup, right? So you've got the mirror window facing T, you have the second one facing the breach. Each is open with drum reinforced off. So those are like the three key parts of the attack, or pardon me, of the defensive setup that the attack tried to break down. And sure, they kind of did in the end, but... Unfortunately, they lost many members in the process, and as you alluded to, right, it meant that they had such a lack of pressure yeah. on the objective that the defense could kind of, kind of sit back, wait, play into time, and they weren't under a whole threat of you know, losing the round. So we'll see how they go this time, whether or not Fury try to split a little bit more, or if they'll try to maybe expedite the process of clearing the map, but either way, they need to be decisive. 
This is an opportunity for them to really stamp their authority in the series and put Scars under some pressure. I think clearing the map is absolutely fine. You just got to do it quicker. It's, you know, it's as simple as that. Get aggressive, get in there, don't stall out. You know someone's in shrine, go and take the fight. You lose it, you lose it. But, you know, make the decision and go uh, because they were hovering around and then still losing the fight. So then you've lost the life and time. Um, you know, so it's really not going to work out for them. Like always, sending the dro drone straight into Geisha. That is good this time. They've recognized that it's empty. They can get themselves straight in there. Just get active on it and they've done that like all this is taking ground this is what you want to see drone goes in it's clear take ground well they emp from wall but then don't immediately follow it up with hard breach i think it would have been a trick either way so maybe a bit of a disconnect there from the attack Not in a position to counteract that nor is dark behind that pip dark was so close there he saw the pixel of the head go across but didn't quite oh, yeah. have the uh, the reflexes did to he, hit the shot. Did you think the Salma earlier went forward? Yes. By the wall. Oh, doubly bad there from Fury. They could be punished, but like Hollis will just brute force his way into jump. We'll correct that mistake, mitigate it a little bit. 60 seconds, so time perhaps not as much of an issue, but they need to be careful. Definitely moved quicker. Tayu, just some really smart movement there. You can see the smoke grenade that went off, and he was stuck inside a terrace, but he used the opportunity. The attackers have actually given him the chance to get out of there. The smoke grenade came in. They wanted to use that to push him behind, but he used it to scarper and get behind small bar. Um, so really, they could have potentially had him uh, shut out there and, and uh, in a difficult position, but like always manages to pick up Wreck. Well, is coming. He might see the gun barrel first. He might not. No, he doesn't. He loses out on the fight. And Fury, they might just have done it here, because They might have broken the back of this defense that they couldn't win previously. Like all this on a triple, they needed the hero play. And boy, as he delivered, make it a 4K. And Fury, they close it out. I-9, he's uh, letting them know that they've won that one. They pick up Skyscraper, and what a start for Fury. Well, I tell you what, after his attempt with the hard breach, like Collis had to do something in that round to make up for it. And he says, well, I won't get one kill, I won't get two or three. Why not make it a quad to close out the map, an 8-6 scoreline? And as I said, this stamps some authority in this series. Sure, it's Fury's map pick, but I think the way in which they were able to gain momentum and really carry them across the line with it was really, really impressive. Yeah, Fury have sent a little bit of a message there, I think. We've got to remember that it was their map pick. We expect them to come out and win it. Um, but yeah, they've certainly not had the easiest run on there, but they've shown that they were able to uh, to do it when it counted, especially like Hollis at the end. What a finish there from him. Um, exactly what they needed. Scars, I think. The fact that it wasn't their map pick maybe helps them a little bit there. You could look at it and think they might just feel a little bit beaten up over that one, but... Um, you know, they've uh, they've got it pretty close and now they can go on to their own map. So before we do that, we're going to have a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We will be back with map two very soon. Right, let's replay the site. We can go for exactly the same lineup again, which is what we can see they're doing on our second monitor over here. I do not We're going to see a lot of aggression very quick here. No, very curious to see what W7M do in terms of the response now in this second round where I think that maybe they want to just reel it in just ever so slightly. Don't need to get too overzealous to begin these rounds. They've already shown enough on the skyscraper map. But they've got the ability to really control defensively. They repeat now for Cocktail. Again, I think they'll have that primary, pretty much similar set up over towards the gar shot where you've got those cast barricades the rooney soya gates you guys like to say that laser gets no one else can say it it's a british thing cannot cannot say it british what i can't say the laser i thought you're taking the piss out of the way that i said cannot and i was like have i said something wrong there can i not speak english where is mr Gus? where's mr laser gates himself where's he gone you've run away somewhere we're not going to get a cameo to say it teach you how to say it the right way so we'll just we'll work through it together don't worry it's like laser gate. Laser gate. So the way you say like laser is like A, but Tim says A. A. Rather than A. Laser. A. But laser gate. Laser gate. Located by attackers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep working on that one. We'll keep working on that one as we go into the second round. W7M, of course, they've kind of reeled it in a little bit, haven't they, where it's now probably not as much of that super aggressive jump out play or anything along those lines where they're trying to get in the face of Virtus Pro. Instead, they're more so just holding these kind of site positions, especially around Pixel, top white. They've even got JV on the stairs itself. One as well over towards Plank. So, yeah, very much a bit more of a sort of bunk it in defense here from W7M. 
So as I said, that same setup. They haven't gone aggressive. Things are looking okay. Chill, at least for now. All good until the shooting starts, though. Halfway through the round, nothing has exploded off the back of it. The Decay be going to be somewhat limited with the mute on side as well, of course. Standing inside the radius of a mute jammer means that you don't get any phone calls. So you're safe from the Decay noise at the very least. Doesn't mean that those charging at you as a result of those calls coming in won't be coming up with a call back. Got to recall, as we've kind of mentioned a couple of times back on Skyscraper as well, the slow kind of entry playstyle of Virtus Pro. Well, it's come to fruition a little bit here in the second round. Just over 60 seconds left. Still no real entry either. I think Joysticks just finally made his way in towards the guard shop. They've had to deal with these uh, Soya gates along with the castle barricades. Dan gets the opening kill, but the trade does come back at the very least quickly from KZ onto Pasha. Under 60 seconds now under the four versus four. Looking to get a bit of that lounge control. Oh, and this is really a, a critical part of it, getting inside a piano and at least using that as a basis to push through white, for example, and almost sides quite the defenders that are holding much further out towards the east side is the critical part. But the way I always used to describe Cafe is you can imagine a diagonal line being drawn from bottom left to top right corner, and it just moves across with the attackers as they take more and more ground, and you start to have to move everything. So now Joystick's able to step across and get this white control that I spoke about. That will let others on the top side of things going in towards bar push across much easier because that threat of Joystick is always going to be there. Always into another, a 4v1. What a great start to Cafe for Virtus Pro. And it feels like we're going to have an attack leaning Cafe. Yeah, I mean, well, let's calm the horses a little bit because right now it just feels like Virtus Pro have found a couple of avenues. And I do wonder if we get attack in response because it's a bit of a rough start defensively for W7M. The fact that they've given up two cocktail rounds, again, it is the best statistical defensive win rate site on this map at 67% so far throughout this tournament. And they've lost it both to start here for Virtus Pro. Now, to be fair, I have called fresh out on that. I think it's incorrect. Because me and Tim have cast it a lot, bar cocktail, and it's a 71 now. I think it's wrong. Because we've cast well, a hell of a lot of it. Cafe. We saw seven rounds of bar and cocktail and not a single defensive win uh, no. defense won in really? that time. Yeah. So now you're saying Fresh is wrong. It, no. I think Fresh is wrong. Okay. I've told him. I've called him out. <laughs> yeah, fair play though. I'll give a shout out to Fresh. He's obviously not working this week, but he's doing tons of stats for this and he's being a real savior. So yeah. God bless. Either way, a massive start for Virtus Pro. Two nothing here on Cafe. The map pick of W7N. A response has clearly been in effect after they did lose out on Skyscraper when they stormed back. The 5 nothing start in favor of W7M. VP brought it all the way back, sent us to overtime only to fall short at the finish line to give W7M that first map, to give them their map. But now the response has come through. 2 nothing start, most of those as well being on attack. 2 nothing. that is exactly the start they would have dreamt of in response to that opening map. Oh, I've changed headsets now. It's the cable's like five times shorter. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm gonna like hold the box and be like, hello. Oh, brilliant. Oh, we go, as you say. Sorry, as you were saying. <laughs> that just really amused me. <laughs> That's why it made me laugh so much. the shortest cable that I've ever seen. I wish I could show everyone I know, but it, I didn't even think you'd be able to put it behind you. <laughs> no, this one's gonna have to stay in front. I'm breaking now. I'm doing a bit of a broadcast faux pas by having it in front of me when we come to the camera next time, but it'll be fun. We roll with it. We move onwards. Yeah, and, and the show must continue. I mean, that's what VP's basically done in this game so far. They move forward. They I love just your left. transitions. You love like, just sweeping the conversation over. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's like speaking off smooth transitions. Well, you're talking about moving on. Well, yeah, yes, you are. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, they've they, they've clearly just left sky scraper behind them. They, they haven't yeah. kept that focus on. I think you know it, it's been said. You really do need to just kind of let go of those bad games, those bad rounds, those bad maps. Move forward. New map. New focus. And VP have started really, really well. For W7M, I mean, they've obviously brought a little bit of aggression to begin in that opening round, but two kills through two rounds is a stark contrast to what we saw from them on Skyscraper. Did. And they carry on this break as well, then it'll be a quick timeout coming in from W7M. As I said, normally if you see three rounds fall away from you, you have that timeout, you have the reset, you get to rethink things through. If it does carry on at this pace, I think W7M will want to break that momentum and have that conversation for a good 45 seconds. The big thing for me though is again, as much as we want to give the plaudits to VP, it's that slow, steady play style. Maybe though, especially on a map like Cafe, that could be a reason why it's a bit more prominent. Cafe at times can be quite slow going. It is a slower paced map. 
And so that actually might play into VP because as we said earlier as well in the broadcast, when they do enter, they are very efficient. Over 50%, there's Joystick, opening kill. No response either from KZ. Eventually though, looking to find that kill onto Joystick in shot, but guess what? Through the wall and through the heart, 4v3 again here for VP. W7M can just not find any kind of consistency on the defense. They can't, no, it's really bizarre, isn't it? Across the two maps, the disparity that we're seeing, the difference in the teams and literally changing a map has flipped things on its head. The attack are running right here. Whereas on the previous map, it was all about the defense having an awful lot of fun. So up and down, up and down is the only way that I can describe it between the two of them. We've got to really see W7 and get warming into it. I said, I think we might see a timeout after this round. For now though, Virtus Pro have got all their players all around Cigar. They're pushing forward this top floor together. And really the zone up here left to defend. The problem is they've got 30 seconds and still three players on the downside. Stairs. The pace they now need to move at may force some errors out that may help W7M get this over the line. Couple of smokes available through Dan on the Brava to maybe just help out, block a few sight lines. Big kill onto Herds because I certainly would have still given W7M every chance on a three versus throw. Nade waiting for that drop down. Gets a view from above, always gets the kill. And we are seeing a very dominant Virtus Pro right now. We are extremely dominant and this is just building into an incredible series like back at this point on the first map we were like oh vp oh. they just haven't turned up like your know, first game of the day not quite in it and they get back in the second half now they're running away with the start of the second dare and i'll say i'm at a point where i'm saying please w7 and let's see you wake up into this game as well let's not see you fall asleep by the wayside Hopefully they can battle their way back in, but I will reserve comment or too much judgment until we get that second half, because again, things can transform massively. It certainly can, but right now, the fact that VP is doing it on the attack means that I take this scoreline a little bit more seriously than say, if it was a W7M defensive onslaught in a similar fashion to Skyscraper that we saw earlier in that opening map. So the fact that it's VP attack, now, mind you, Dez, we've seen crazier things happen. You said it early, this could end up being a attacker side of cafe which i think would be maybe the first attacker side of game at this tournament if it uh -huh. does eventuate in that fashion it's building that way very quickly isn't it yeah here we go into the next round then got the remaining. maestro coming on side again i've remarked on this a few times today but sometimes you've seen warden drops Five away and the maestro left. brought along kind of as a, a pseudo sort of warden it's not exactly the same obviously it's a static gadget you can put down it and give you a lot of information but it's also the fact that it can th see through smokes and through light screens and whatever else might get brought along so handy for that purpose and also let's not forget how Absolute beast. Two brown bought though, which is a little bit surprising. Yeah. Very curious. To Not see paired up with electric, which is interesting because yeah. you normally see that. So here it's a pure. I wonder if it's like an, a positional denial of, say, like a top red position. Throw those Zoto canisters in around that area, maybe on the doorway, makes it difficult to push through. Maybe in towards the cigar shop, considering this again is cocktail. I am absolutely curious to see how Nate is going to utilize those canisters. Onto the roof immediately for Virtus Pro, looking to find four attacking rounds in a row. That is the task at hand for them. They brought the Osiris as well. Let's see if that's going to be utilized along with again the Brava from Dan who's been able to get four kills so far and he's not the only one. Joystick also and always both have four to go alongside him so a nice team performance so far for Virtus Pro in the attack of Cafe. The Oscar on side is obviously the key thing you're looking at as the agent of chaos on the Virtus Pro side where they choose to employ it, where that shield goes down, everything will be based around this. Of course, diffuser in back pocket for Shepard as well. Again, it orchestrates everything. So follow the shield and you'll know what it is Virtus Pro are trying to achieve. Welcome back to the B stream. We've just seen a cracking game between Fury and Scars open up on Skyscraper. Fury were able to take the win, but boy, it was a close one, Gus. Yeah, they really have to grind this game out. And I think for the longest time, we were sort of posing the question, at what point will Fury be able to string not only back-to-back -back rounds, but then be able to convert that into something a little bit bigger? Obviously, Scar pushing them to OT. It was very, very close between the two, but then at the flick of a switch, Fury were like, okay, we're here, we mean business. And on the primary side, they delivered 8-6 victory in the end on their pick. And Scar's now, their spot in the tournament really on the ropes. We need to see them perform on their own pick now. Yeah, there's all sorts of uh, sort of like mental angles coming into this one. You know, you look at it and you think, well, Scar's won't be too cut up by that. It wasn't their map choice. They took them to overtime. You can probably take a little bit of something from that. But like you say, the pressure starts to mount now because you're looking at it if you're Scar's and thinking, you know, realistically, if we don't get a result against Fury, we're going to have to get a result against Falcons. That's where their other chance is likely to come. Uh, 
um, you know, if at all. So Scars, yeah, definitely backs to the wall now as Fury take that first one, 86. We can see the map stats there. You picked up on Crit J beforehand, had a fantastic game, 15 and 9. I9 actually tops the charts with 14 and 9, just slightly more in terms of, uh, you know, those other little bits of stats that add up along the way, the assists and the uh, the util players. Um, but overall, very good performance from uh, from the Fury players. Yeah, I will say that. I mean, that Crit J wreck head-to-head, -head, you know, quite even, especially when it comes to the entry. Both players going three and three. One thing that stands out to me, and he was a big proponent of the winning round, like Colas going 3-0 yep. on the entry, despite being that support supportive role, that hard breach role. So impressive from him. Pretty much the players that we expect to show up have done a pretty good job in the first map. I think it's probably just the tail end that has lacked a little bit for Scars. And again, if they could tidy up and probably feel a little bit more confident on their own pick, they'll probably improve their performance and they need to. Again, it's that extra layer of pressure. Their spot in the tournament starting to get a little bit precarious. Yeah, I don't think the Falcons are a shoe in at this point for them. No, absolutely not. I mean, obviously Falcons had the roster issue to begin with, but they're now at full strength. So we saw them then stretch it to three maps when they were playing yesterday. They're not going to be an easy win for Scars. So yeah, absolutely. I think Scars definitely needing to try and get something rescued out of this one. Our next map will be Night Haven Labs. It is Scars choice. Um, I haven't personally seen Fury play on this, so I don't know exactly what we're going to get from them. Um, but Scars definitely need to come in here with a game plan. They need to keep to it and they need to get this win. Yeah, I mean, I had the pleasure of uh, covering Fury v Falcons on labs. Perfect, it was the first in that best of three and Falcons were able to just edge out in the end. And as I think I was talking to you a little bit about, it was very much a game of both teams trying to take it by the horns and setting the pace and dictating it as much as possible. There was some to and throw in terms of the pacing and it was a little bit all over the place. Fury, unfortunately, their attacks did lack though. only the one out of the five that they won. So that's something to keep in mind. I mean, it kind of makes sense given what we've just seen on Skyscraper. Um, at times, Fury definitely sort of stalling out on the attack, not really getting towards the site, not really getting past what I would call sort of step two. Um, you know, step one, get yourself established inside of the map. Step two, get the kills, open up the space and prepare yourself for execute. Things like your hard breach onto site, things like clearing utility. Step three, Debbie, in that final execute. So uh, they were just never really getting themselves through to the end of step two and being stood there ready to have that discussion of can we put this diffuser down or not um, and that's definitely something that they're going to need to improve i'm not sure night haven labs is really uh, the map for that kind of attacking problem to exist because it's big there's a lot of space to cover if you've got a clear you know you're on a basement attack for example you've got a clear from top floor down that's an awful lot of work to do and there's an awful lot of places where you can stall where you can get stuck and so i'm just not sure how much it's going to lend itself to fury style i mean fundamentals on this map for me are so so important you think about the attack having to break so many really critical crossfires on things like top floor basement etc you have to be clean you have to be concise you have to work as a unit and as i mentioned back on the previous map the tail end of both teams was struggling and you have to make sure that they're being put in supportive positions to help those fraggers who can get the job done Absolutely, I think you can probably see as we can on your screens there, just a small technical issue over on the Scars side. Well, we're going to take a very short break. It'll be a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. We will be back with this one continuing before you know it. Ball can be enough to take you out and more, but can be a little bit more secure. You're kind of stood there with your gun out. If you've got the right angle, you're being blown up. Whereas a gadget running across the floor, okay, cool, you destroy that. So what, I've got more in that pocket that I can throw out once again. Just love RAM for the side. Yeah. Opening kill, of course, for VP again. Very successful. Not just off of JV, though, not as successful. I actually think that might have hurt. Philippox has taken some damage anyway. Docker B Logic Bomb goes out. Over 90 seconds left in the round. Good little clear okay, up above from Virtus Pro. Not overly focused on the site, at least not just yet. Really playing into this Vert, especially even with the Montank from Shepard. Now over towards the hallway. He's got himself into a, an intriguing position where there's a gas babe in his face over towards Pixel, despite the fact this is Kitchen. <laughs> and he's just like, no problem. I'll open up a diversion. We'll just walk around. Redirected traffic on the motorway. Easy peasy. Shepard carries.
on his march down white. Whenever I see this, by the way, I always think back to a really old G2 versus Na'Vi game where Pengu was playing on, I want to say, Monty, and it was Kendru for Na'Vi at the time playing on the Clash of slowing the Monty down the whole way of the end white stairs. And they found the spot down to 30 seconds and managed to win as a result. This round is starting to feel a little bit slow in the same way. 60 seconds to go or so into a four versus four. And Herds, an absolute titan, and they've shot the Monty in the back as well. This is more of what you expect to see. Herds having such a great last map, really putting in a shift here for his team in this round, which means Virtus Pro might finally suffer a loss on Cafe. Yeah, we'll see. He's still a bit of time here. There was still one bo uh, Boogie Auto Breacher available from Pasha. He opts to not use it. Does actually still have the Diffuser in hand. Always makes his way down Brown. And Pasha does get a kill onto JV. Brings it back to a two versus three. Hurt, does he finally make his move? Though? Well, once again, I under-promise and over-deliver. We get a shorter break than expected. We are ready to go. We've got our social stats in. Another close one. Nobody really knows. This was always going to be one of the closest matchups of the day, I think, between Fury and Scars. We take a little flip on the fly-through. We um, have already seen the skyscraper. It is indeed the Night Haven Labs that we are heading into, Gus. Yeah, keen to see how Scars try and settle themselves now in this best of three, knowing that every... Single round is going to be critical if they want to keep in the top four and be seeded into that playoff bracket. Of course, Fury played this map yesterday, again, against Falcons, unfortunately, though. They did just fall short, so there's weaknesses there, and I'm eager to see if Scars can rebound and exploit them. Going to have a bans coming in then, and we will kick off with another Dorkaby ban. We saw that in the last map as well. It was accompanied by Blitz last time. Um, we will see whether that is the case or not. Well, there you go. We've oh. got our... We've got identical bands so far. Um, it was Solus and Azami last time, so let's see if that happens again. Yeah, it wouldn't be overly surprising. There's one of them. <laughs> That could be as well, just a quick note. Fury have banned out at every single map so far at the event. That's five total. Could well be a sixth if Scars push them to their limits as we wait for the final defensive ban to come through. Will it be one of the big defenders? It will. It's the Solace once more. So a bit of deja vu for the second map. Yep, absolutely identical bans to what we saw last time around. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, at least two of those, if not three, I think you can include Dockerby in this. Uh, you know, three of those are always going to be powerful operators. It doesn't matter which map you're on. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. Uh, you know, there is always going to be value in taking them off the board, um, particularly to support your attacks. So no surprise, really, to see them going the blitz. Like you say, maybe just a little bit more of a target, maybe, or something. Um, you know, it's probably a less common one that we see along the way but again blitz can be very useful on the roam clear a lot of the time uh, you know that's Attack not always how he's seen as, as being used but get him in there to a top floor like this for example sweep through the map quickly pressure those roamers use the flash so again it maybe just gives you a little bit more comfort out on those extensions well storage for round number one i don't think i have start. ever casted the game of night uh, haven labs where this has been the first objective chosen by <laughs> the defense not. So, you know, an opportunity to perhaps catch Scars off guard. Yeah, Obviously, that. that strategy is mitigated to what it may have been a couple of years ago now with the introduction Five, of attack repick. But in terms of what Scars may have came come into this game expecting, attack that has you know, thrown a bit of a curveball. They didn't do this yesterday. I definitely would have remembered if they did. So we'll see how Scars respond. It's going to be a top floor push, I would imagine, from Scars. We will see over the next minute or so whether they shape up towards that. Um, Again, you want them to get that warehouse catwalk locked down, really. You need to get servers. Um, you can see there's a couple of players up there. There's Lycolis, and there's also a Valkyrie up there as well. So Crit is in position to try and hold on to this top floor, and as suggested, really, Scar straight away towards that IT wall. Exothermic charge on there, and they're going to be opening that up and trying to pressure, move across, and clear out at the top. Yeah, I think as well, I saw a bit of defensive setup on the basement floor actually from Fury. So they may look to vert up above in the late round as well. So just something to keep in mind. Yes, Solus is banned out, but with some info off the Valkyrie cameras, for instance, we may well see that leaned into by the defense. Not the case at the moment, but with the hatch opened up in the garage and um, you know, other passages of play available, we could see that come into fruition. But all focus on the top floor currently. And this is a very nice drone, Tim. 
It is, indeed. Um, you can take that away, have a look at it in rank, see if you can find the spot, hop it up there, keep it out of the way. I think there's some monitors mounted up on the wall and they've just managed to get up on top of a little drone parkour. We always love a little bit of it. And so that's just going to be providing an awful lot of information on those players up on the top. We can see one of the Fury players has dropped back down now. Um, so the top floor holds sort of just that little bit weaker, um, but they've done a decent job. They've wasted half the round and they've come back and kept themselves alive as I say it though like all this gets taken down fish like finding an open a wreck onto dark traded out immediately by that man once again it's crit jake I'm not entirely sure what the thinking process for like Colas is there to chase the kill so far away from the objective and he could have just tried to hold his ground and push the attack back unfortunately Fury tried to commit doesn't work out 2v4 against them as scars look to claim the first round here on the tertiary objective but crit J won't go down without a fight still alive with a Nitro in hand. There's an Eagle as well. By night goes for the pinch. It's a success, but now he needs to clutch up. One versus a two. Tayu is in position to be able to get this diffuser down. Um, low health, but unlikely that there's going to be an opportunity for I9 exactly, to exactly. stop the plant going down. But he's got himself into a position to at least try and pick up a nice kill to level the playing field here. But no, Fishlight has the angle. Shuts him down, and that's going to be the first round going to Scars. Nice start for them. Yeah, they react nicely. The offsite, not off putting enough. Doing a good job to get the basics done and smiles all around, which is all the way I mean, it's great to get it out of the way, isn't it? Because now they can look at it and think, we've got that one. They're going to be pre pretty reliant on getting tank and getting store, uh, getting uh, servers done. So at that point, you're looking at, right, we've got three here. You know, all we've got to do is play our game and we should be 3-0 up. Um, you know, so I'm sure that that's how Scars are going to be feeling about it. Uh, so a really good start for them. It is tank and assembly that they go down to, so it's going to be that basement floor um, for Fury, sorry. So Scars now looking to, to work their way across. They're going to need to clear out the map. They're going to need to get the vertical inside of storage. So again, Fury going to set up with a little bit of mid-floor presence, I would expect. They can't give that area of the map over too soon to Scars. I guess on the flip side, though, they need to be careful not to push the limits too much. We saw in that last round, like Cole is chasing a, a pick on an unconfirmed location in lobby of all places, literally up of a corner of the map. And they tried to double down, Dark followed up, they both die. Then at the disadvantage, the rest of the team couldn't hold on, despite the best efforts by nine of the time. So it's always a very fine balance. Sure, the game currently is defend decided, but if you push the limits too much, a decent team on attack will still punish you, so. Siege is a very complicated game. It certainly and, is. Uh, you have to be very, very careful. That's why we love it. Yeah. That's why we love it. Uh, Fishlight going to open up the uh, window to kick things off. They're not going to find anybody inside, but just allowing that point of ingress. Sometimes it can be a good idea to open those barricades up because it's a big sound cue. You don't necessarily want to open them up just before you're going to hop inside um, because people, obviously, their attention will be drawn to them. So quite often get it opened up, get your droning done, and then you can move in a little bit more sort of silently, a bit more stealthily. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, you know, a pretty high-level strategy employed by teams. It's not just as simple as just a barricade. It's about perceived pressure. It's about entry points into the map later on as well. The whole split theory debacle, the debate as well, and you know, opening up avenues for the attack to exploit. Everything is done for a reason. And Crypt J looking to perhaps play first contact on the staircase. Can chip away a drone economy as well, which has been hurt a little bit. As they continue to tick down, I was just looking at the counter. Only three now remain. Four players from either side remain, as it's an initial trade. I'm sure you take very, very low off the back of a nitro cell, but he'll survive. Skeleton key in hand. He can still get to work on the vert, but Wreck has been very sneaky down towards Exo. I see he's done a good job of getting down here, and I don't think that they've got any idea whatsoever, and I like that pressure from above. Well, Shoy taking down I9, I9, but had I9 scrambled and tried to run away, Wreck was stood there waiting for him and would have got the kill. Um, so really nicely played by Scars there. Great teamwork. They don't know, I don't think, about Dark, who has managed to make his way back up to the mid-floor. This could be a game-defining flank one way or the other. Manages to miss his shot but finishes it off onto Peon and that levels us up at three versus three and you just think that could be an opportunity now for Fury to build on in and get something out of this round. Yeah, two of these attackers are particularly low so this push will be a challenge. Ram up above, provide some noise coverage, create line of sight alongside the buck. It's a question of whether or not Scarlet 
actually play off that. Two players are isolated here in that pocket to the right. So we'll see if you're able to play around this wreck. Doesn't miss that shot onto my Colas. BG man, though, has been allowed to cross. One taps wreck. And now we're sure that the diffuser in hand needs to combine with Fishlight. 2v2, we're sure he's very low health, um, which is going to be a problem. Uh, Fishlight needs to get moving here and get on the cover. We're sure he's putting this diffuser down, but there's going to be an opportunity for him to push because Fishlight's not in position. He does a great job. He such low health of getting out of the way of that Nitro. Fishlight now in a much better position to cover. That's where he needed to be. Allows the diffuser to go down, and that's a big win for Washoi. Low health manages to get one. It's all up to Fishlight. He's waiting for the swing, times it perfectly, finds his man, and Scars take a second attack. Tell you what, it didn't look all that great for Scars towards the back end of that round. Low on HP, avenues towards site weren't great, but then Fury found themselves two stacking the bottom of the staircase. Bit of a death run across, and only one made it. And unfortunately, then BG Man not able to quite do enough in the end, ultimately. So Scars off to... A great start on a bit of a heater at the moment. And that excitement, I think, is really going to bring this roster alive. Yeah, Scars know what they need out of this one. Um, they come in the 2-0. They could well potentially go 3-0 here. You feel like they've got a really good handle on attacking these sites. Um, done very well so far on those first two. So for me, yeah, lock this down. Get a really good attack in half. Can I see Fury being this good on the attack after what we saw on Skyscraper? No, I can't. So I think if Scars get three or four here, they've almost sewn up the map. Um, you know, they're going to be very confident getting onto defense then. So um, Scars pointing in the right direction. Just need to keep on walking. Yeah, I totally agree. If you play like they did yesterday on this map, it's going to be uh, a very, very difficult challenge for them to overcome. Sure, they could have spent last night workshopping something, but I don't think... be a quick one. Yeah, I don't think the change would have been drastic enough to bring this back. So it's important now that they rebound defensively. They don't have an opportunity to make too many more mistakes and drop too many more rounds here. So we'll see if he can maybe bring his team back into the match. I'm sure he almost falls, but unfortunate for Crit J, he won't get that kill. Crit J is waiting for the footsteps there. Um, stood close to the barricade, wait for the footsteps, and then just spray and pray as they come across. And it really nearly did the job. Now then, interested Nitro placement there, just waiting for the reinforcement to drop oh. off. What a find from I9! Sit down, Rick! I tell you what, the presence of mine to check that angle. Very, very well played there. That's by somebody R9. who's died to that angle. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a the, common those angle. Those are to the be angles I check every time after I've died to it, without <laughs> a doubt. Well, good presence of mind, good execution, and Wreck now in the grave for the remainder of the round. As the rest of Scars try to open the Ooh, wall. It doesn't get it. Trying to get that electrical, and the uh, ash charge didn't go through. Yeah, a little bit messy. That's what they were concerned about. They were concerned about the Nitro. It is going to go off and not going to have the impact that they had hoped. Twitch Drone goes in, just marks out that F Nat just on the inside of the wall there. Um, so they will have to be cautious for the push through into IT. And I think now Scars just need to be looking for a little bit of pressure elsewhere. It's been very one dimensional so far towards that IT wall. Halfway through the round, it's time to make Fury turn around and feel like they have to defend somewhere else as well. Well, they've done a decent job in defending those mirror windows as far as I can see. As I say that, I just hear one pop in the background. Yeah. So, of course, the curse that. Down below, though, a potential engagement to ensure it's fish like, it's Crit J. And I think Crit J will come out on top. He does. So, five versus three. Fury with a significant advantage. Minute on the clock. Yeah, so easy for Crit J there. He always knew that the man was coming, so just had to mop him all five versus three now. So the problem for Scars is that Fury have got men to spare, so they can just start sort of moving around underneath. They can come up different staircases, where they can change the position, and they can even throw a man or two at this, which is exactly what Dark does, but gets punished for it, and they can only do that so many times before it becomes a problem. I know I'm looking for one life always gets aggressive and shut down on the same angle. Three versus three, there's an opportunity here for Scars to maybe try just pushing on inside. Uh, the Koto Canis are just going to slow them down at the minute on that push forward. 18 seconds on the clock and Crit J on the prowl for a couple more in this round. And he gets them both. Three total. The Goo Mine to close it out. And Fury finally mount a response. 
Yeah, much better round from Fury there. The couple of kills that came underneath Crutcher getting the second of them were, were defining, really, because, as I said, it just gave them that manpower to move around. They could switch things up. I-9 with an absolute beauty as well, it has to be said, through mm. that reinforcement onto the angle up on the roof. Um, absolute killer. So we're just going to see that here. It's a lead down as well. Oh, it's an absolute treat. I mean, the one difficult aspect of defending this site is without the Azami, the actual objective is exposed to so many angles of attack that it's really difficult to lock down. So you have to be quite aggressive and proactive. And, you know, a play like that from I-9, the lurk down below from his teammate of Crit J just helps alleviate site pressure and Scars, despite ultimately, you know, getting some decent control rafters and exposing the site, they didn't have a lot of time, they didn't have the best positions or information, and ultimately unable to close that one out. So, we work in theory, but this is, you know, the start of a, a larger, so I don't want to say comeback because it's so early in the round, yeah. but after having a slow start, it almost is, especially when you're on the defensive side. Yeah, I mean, for, for the time being, you look at Scars, 2-1 in the first quarter, you know, double that up, let's say it goes the same way, 4-2, great attacking start for them and they're almost certainly going to go on and take the map you would expect from there unless Fury deliver something uh, different a little unexpected on their attack so Fury for me need to get that's it at least the next two attacking rounds they want to give themselves an opportunity at 4-2 really to take the pressure off that attacking half but for the time being we've got an immediate push towards the bottom floor coming in from Scars I think they're aware that I-9 is down here and that's why the pressure is coming underneath we've seen that soft wall opened up with the skeleton key and they're just going to look and see if they can catch him out, but tell you what, Anand's playing this a little bit sneaky. If this drone does not catch him, they are going to be in trouble. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh, oh dear. No. He saw him. He's just going to stand there. He knows. He's just going to stay there now. They're droning again. They're droning, 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 but they are not going to check that boost spot. They're going to walk in, and Anand's going to get at least one. Unless he saw him and he's faking it, but I don't think he did. No, I don't think so. He's not ADSing coming towards this wall. He's double checking again, just making sure. And he's going to kick himself when he's triple checked and he walks in and still gets slammed by I-9. He's going to wonder just exactly how he was able to find his way there, surely. I mean, we saw a similar setup down below last time. There's the push. So easy. Wow. Missed drawn him. And it's the, that shows the fine margins. How close was that drone to seeing I-9 twice? And the reality is that Washai needed to take that drone another six feet forward and have a look on the boost spot. That's the reality. I was going to say a couple of metres, but I suppose <laughs> that would have been lost in translation. Up above, though, Crit J under pressure. And he's now in an awkward spot. Rep to try and flush him out. Knows where he is. Plans the shot. So a two versus four. And despite Washoi having a devastating start to the round, the rest of Scars have stepped up. Yep, they've all picked it up, uh, and that's exactly what they needed for versus two. That natural won't do the job, or will it? I thought that was far too distant, but it was not. Manages to pick up Wreck, and that leaves us now two versus three. Fishlight's going to be sending the utility in, as will the Thermite. Tayu goes in through the wood, through the window. The uh, Q-Man is going to slow him down for the time being. i 9s going to take some damage. Diffuser going down here, and it is not looking good right now for Fury, although Dark is in position, gets the Diffuser down at his feet with 30 seconds left to go a 1v3 becomes a 1v1 the red ping is there he knows exactly where the final man in knows the peon is out in warehouse needs to find the kill the peak is unsuccessful peon shuts his man down and that is going to be another round for scars oh <laughs> scary for scars the three versus one almost slips through their fingers but they're able to convert Again, the very beginning of the round, that awkward little engagement down below, I thought was going to set themselves up poorly, but elsewhere, exploiting the map, top floor was clean. This, not so much. Fishlight could not cover his teammate, pure a long way away, but he hit a very clean shot with the 417, and Pyun says, no, no, we'll win this round. Thank you very much. It's kind of tough for Dark there, because you can look at that situation and think 1v1, one one, you've got Diffuser at your feet, and there's an element where you'd be screaming like, don't peek it, don't peek it, you know. But ultimately, Peon knows exactly where he is. 
The fight is coming. There's 30 seconds left to go, so he can't just hold on forever. Um, and if he just sits still, if he goes prone, if he does anything like that, he's basically got a 50-50 chance because Pion can come either side of that pillar. So he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. Maybe he gets a little sound cue. Maybe he can play off that a little bit. But I kind of feel that Dark's done the right thing there. Sometimes you've just got to take the fight. You might not want it. You might not, It might not be ideal, but you've just got to try and take it on your terms. And that's what he's done. Pion... It's a 50-50 gamble. He's got it right. He's watched the right side of the pillar. If Dark peaks from the other side of the pillar, probably a different outcome, but it's just one of those. So unfortunate for Fury, but Scars locked down another good round. 3-1. I don't think we saw it in the replay package, but of course we did now feed. 4-1-7, he just like one-tapped him yeah, with the DMR. I mean, very fine margins and unfortunate there for Dark and his clutch attempts. We go over to Kitchen, though. First appearance in the match, round number five. And I'm intrigued to see what the approach will be here from both teams. The Ying being brought out from Fish Lake to perhaps create a little bit of space, but it's Tai Yu to find the first on the primary hard breach. Hard hitting, finds the kill. Mashoi though falls, and that's back to back rounds from him where he has been the first death for Scars. Well, before then, the trades have come quite often um, on the back of the entries. Nobody seems to keep an advantage for too long. Dark rips down the barricades, just deciding that the movement is more important than the Vulcan canisters for the time being. They're going to be um, up and down. And then Pion up on the rooftop. So just a little bit slower from Scars here. Rec does manage to pick up Crit J, though, and maybe that's just going to give him the impetus. That's going to give him the push forward. They're trying to take this top floor. Um, they're pretty confident now, I think, that they've got their access that they need to it. Like, all this Nitro in hand has had some success so far, um, but he's going to have to be patient for a second or two if they want to catch anybody here. And will not. No. Fortunate. Another Nitro. And as we hold with baited breath to see if this one will land, but that's all the way over towards Con. So I don't think we're actually going to see a, an attacker step foot there, at least not for a little while. Focus over towards Lobby. Probably wanting to open up the wall. Tyre is still with an exothermic. I suppose Hyun will have this in hand, and he does, so they can combine that. And then probably keeping an eye on Fish Like to go for a push somewhere else off the back of their candles and really help create some space and a distraction for the rest of this attack. Yeah, the like, the, they've got the vertical, but I don't feel like they've really done that much with it. Um, Rec manages to get a double, though, so that's just going to open things up. Sometimes just got route one, I guess, walk up to site door, see if he can get a couple of kills. He does. The wall's going to open. That makes I9's life a lot more difficult. The Candela comes in, but isn't going to matter because it's the warden that's running in. Shots will rain on. They'll likely know that now. Reacts well to the push through the window knows that the thermite's up on the reinforcement I think but nothing he can do as Pion picks up that final kill one versus four was a big ask for I9 another successful attack for Scars and you just feel that this one is absolutely rocketing towards that fourth that third map so a tactical time out then from Fury sensing that this map is slowly beginning to peter out for them unfortunately one attacking or pardon me one defensive round win out of a possible five just simply isn't good enough at it's this not. kind of level it's just not going to stand up and i again from what we saw from fury yesterday their attacks i reckon they'll win one or two attacks so they're trailing by a significant margin um, and unfortunately, I don't know how much of an impact this timeout will have. No, I think, um, you know, ultimately looking forward as well, obviously Fury have more games to come, um, and they need to win some of them. Yeah, they've got a win against Falcons, but it won't necessarily be uh, a guarantee. Obviously, it depends how the rest of this one goes, but let's, for argument's sake, say that Scars win. Things get very, very close down there at the bottom there, and I think there's, you know, a potential that other teams, having seen this, might just try and position Fury towards uh, Haven Labs because they just don't really seem to be up to speed with it. Whoa, I think I almost just blew an eardrum. <laughs> Where are we? But that's the kind of energy and excitement that we really love Scars for. We adore it. And when they feed into it, they can be a really dangerous team. So, round six, the final of the half. Scars really tr chasing down that 5-1 lead, which would be phenomenal for them. The Fury, not so much. We'll just use their tactical time out and know that this is pretty much a do or die. 
Yep, more than likely. Um, right, okay, so we've got the uh, position of warehouse catwalk there. I think the Legion of Dark is likely to try and keep hold of that. Um, just stay in that position, prevent too much left. pressure. There was uh, an attempt by Scars to get in via that direction okay, last time around, but uh, no, we're not going to actively play somebody out on there for now. Um, we've got Crit J working underneath at the minute inside of storage. I think just... Um, you know, again, looking for anybody getting in underneath, playing the book, anything like that, trying to open up. Uh, you know, there isn't a book on side, he won't know that. Um, but we're sure he does have the ash, so could do a little bit of vertical destruction um, and work from underneath. So Crit J is just going to try and prevent that. Yeah, I wonder how aggressive Yuri will be here in the initial part of the round. Again, knowing that without Zami, holding in the objective is really, really challenging. So at last time with Peek through the Maverick hole onto the roof, Paiyu once again bring the blowtorch into the battlefield. Although this time I don't believe that same angle is being held, nor is I-9 close by. Instead he's over towards Electrical to perhaps catch an attacker off guard. Maverick now grateful for the uh, recent alterations to Tuberau, I think. Um, Very grateful. He's not... <laughs> affected anymore by the um, by the canister so we'll continue burning out obviously the operator is still affected by the freeze effect um, and we'll be able to continue burning out as normal BG man just peppering through that wall um, as soon as the reinforcement drops hoping to catch somebody will catch nothing but not the end of the world send a few bullets through you never know what you're going to get I like this from scars so there's a tension towards IT the wall's been opened nobody's really pushing it at the minute so it's a bit of phantom pressure but they're on electrical window they're going into connector, they're really making it difficult here for Fury to focus in any one direction. Yeah, and the Grim used there to flush out electrical, so Scars are slowly chipping away at map control. Wreck vaults into con. And as you can see on the overhead, it's just I-9 lurking on the mirror window. Playing the warden, so the smart glasses able to peek through the smoke. So Fury will need to be very mindful of the deployment of those, or Scars needs to be very mindful of the deployment of those, the flashes as well. These mirror windows posing a problem though. Two main entry points being guarded by the defense. Yeah, we'll show you. Trying to get himself into warehouse. The Ooh, that was close. Tayu comes around on a bit of a backstab, but is picked up on a trade by I-9. So four versus four scars. Trying to take a little bit more ground. The fact that they're able to just stand on this pillow wall, um, pillow wall is not great at the minute because they can work their way in, which is exactly what they do. Rex pops in, gets a double, make it a triple. Like always, shuts down with Shoy. Fishlack is making the plant happen now. Shut down by Rex, a 4K on the round. And that is another successful attack for scars. Make that 5-1 on the half, and things are falling apart quickly for Fury. Good work from Wreck. A fantastic snowball through the mid to late round. The 4-1-7 getting to work as he's able to line them up. A lack of coverage in the objective just makes it challenging for Fury to respond. And yeah, they just fell apart in the end once the walls were open. The mirrors were pressured and ultimately dealt with and flushed out. Defenders didn't leave a whole lot to offer in terms of defensive pressure. So a 5-1 lead. And I think we can pretty much set the expectation that Scars will run away with it. Choice of start here, I think, is perfect from Scars. Given what we saw, I've already mentioned it, from what we saw on Skyscraper, this site is surely going to be difficult for Fury to attack. You have to clear above. You have to get hard breach, if at all possible. And they showed us how slow they were and how prone to stalling out they were when they come up against a problem on Skyscraper sometimes. And I just feel like there's so many opportunities for that to happen here to throughout Night Haven on a basement attack that Scars have just lent into Five that and left. said, you know what? They struggled a little bit for time on Skyscraper. Let's just double down on it and make it as difficult as possible for them. Yeah, I mean, I would double down and say it's just objectively better than top four, so... <laughs> well, you know, that is also a conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's a full aggressive extension from Scars all the way up to IT, wall yep. reinforced. No surprise at all that. Muted off. So for Fury, it's about expediting this attack and not being stalled out. They may have a lack of tools to deal with this, i.e. no Thatcher on the board, no impact on MPs, which just make things a little bit more challenging, but I have the Brava, so it might not be the end of the world, Mav as well, but he'll probably want to focus efforts on the breach towards the objective itself. Going to come forward, player spotted, and Crit J gets absolutely destroyed by Fisher. And that 
was the worst possible start to come out of Fury. Uh, because they start working on that clearance, they lose a body, and now Scars have extras. Now Scars can just leave people out in the map until Fury get more kills. Scars have the luxury of leaving players on this top floor, running away, disappearing off into the map. Nice use of the nade there, where Shoy gets forced out like Corliss picks up the kill. 4v4, but... It's only one kill, and we are now halfway through Attackers the round, still with players from Scars out. out in the map. And Rack, who's been very dangerous in this match, 11 and 4, still up and about, looking to get himself into more action by Polis to enter through blue, and F not mine to impede his progress. And this is a basement defense tip. This is so far away from the objective itself, and like Cole is caught, Rack gets a freebie. And Scars with the advantage now, and they double down a four versus two. It just looks exactly like the same as that exhibition office on Skyscraper, where there was loads of fighting around T and karaoke, and it was like, no, hang on, this isn't actually the site. You know, this is just trying to get to the site. Again, they've been absolutely nowhere near basement. There are players from Scars sat in basement with their hands off the mouse and keyboard, just waiting for something to happen because Fury have just spent so much time and manpower trying to clear out the map and being unsuccessful in doing so. Scars, perfect site choice to kick things off. It's going to put them on map point almost certainly. Yeah, I mean, you, at this point in the round, take stock in like the drone economy, for instance, right? There's only three drones left with Solus Band yeah. out and a mute on the board. It's just not effective information gathering from Fury and then the, any information that they may have had, they weren't acting upon. So, disappointing for Fury and I think they set the precedent well on Skyscraper that this isn't a playstyle that leans well into them, uh, that hasn't leaned into them well for the day so far. Why not try and go perhaps a little bit more direct and try and catch Scars off guard if they're going to extend across the map? Exactly that. Exactly that, because they know they've stalled out. They know that time's been the factor. Um, you know, so maybe just try and go Five route one. Left. But BG Man manages to get one, taken out as he drops down the hatch. The outcome is as expected. Scars managed to get number six on the board. 6-1 it is now. And I do not think that Fury have another round in them on that Haven Labs, if I am honest. I think a top floor hold will be the end of it. But I always like to be surprised, so we will see what happens. In the grand scheme of things, it is a best of three, so it will level up. Fury were able to win Skyscraper. Um, if Scars win here on Night Even Labs, it will be one apiece, and we will be going to our decider, which is Shally. And again, I have concerns about that Fury attack on Shally, because again, there are a number of sites. I'm thinking gaming, I'm thinking basement particularly, both of them, where you're going to have to do a lot of map clearance. And what you can't keep doing is getting into these skirmishes in other areas of the map for two minutes and never going anywhere near site. You're winning nothing. You know, you can even come away having won the fights, but you're not winning rounds. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and Scars have already demonstrated that. Defensively, they are quite sound on Chalet, pushing, of course, the Sonics, 8-7. They yeah. did collect their defensive round in overtime, ultimately not enough in the end, but still concerning signs for Fury in the context of this particular best of three. For storage, we go, though, for Max Point. Probably not the objective I would have gone to, but we've seen a, quite a bit of playtime on it, and there are layers of complexity to it that if Scars exploit it properly, We'll lean into the time quite heavily. Again, an approach towards uh, top floor directly. Uh, rather than top floor site, which I expected, it's uh, actually storage that they've gone to, but there is still going to be battles over that top floor. I, I think, to be fair, um, it, it kind of leans into that time question again for Scars. You know, they're looking at it thinking, if we go top floor, Fury are going to do what they probably should be doing and just giving us a chance of just running straight up to site. Um, you know, so... Let's go mid floor and let's give them more to do. Let's go somewhere that we can have an extension because if they play on the top floor, it really reduces um, the possibility for Scars to have that extension of defenders. So I think actually probably the pretty smart there. choice because again, you can see the baiting them into the fights on the top floor. Well, it's been an okay start for I-9 on the Brava with those Clodge drones capturing at least one Maestro Evil Eye, a default cam as well. If not, mines will be vulnerable as well. You can see he's flicking that info at the moment and eager to gather a little bit more as well if he can. And that could expose the site quite a bit, provided Fury can then play that information. Don't know why I know I would be electing to shoot fish like at the midway point of the round with that critical info. He pays the price, it's now off the board. 
Minute 30 on the clock. And Fury will begin their progression on the top floor. Need to get moving though, because they don't want to keep burning out the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but Fury keep having the same issue. Over and over, BG Man is going to start opening up this wall. Needs to be careful, he's doing so at head height and might just expose himself if he's not careful. Oh, it's almost as if I expected it, Gus. Gets taken down by Washoi. Four versus three. Crit J trying now to use that hole that's been opened up, but can't find any joy through it. Coming into that final minute, and again, Fury looking a little bit wobbly. Yeah, and Crit is going in blind here. Not where you want to find yourself. Beautiful Nitro down teamwork, below. That beautiful teamwork. Yeah, good call out from Pjorn. 45 seconds then. And it's a two versus four. Fury trying their best to keep the map alive. But unfortunately, without that diffuser in hand and the lack of information, this is going to be very, very tough. Yeah, they managed to get a good one there. Crit J is just peeking around the corner. Picks up with Shoi. Two versus three. 30 seconds left to go, though. Like you said, Diffuser down in IT. A long way from sight. Um, I-9 still just trying to grab gadgets. And you've got 20 seconds left. I know that taking the yeah, evil eye reduces the information the enemy team have got. But I just feel like maybe it's a little bit late for worrying about it. Crit J is still up on the top floor. Going to open up some verticals. He's all alone now as Tayu takes down I-9. Great there. Manages to get it back to a 1v1. Four seconds left to go. My might just have to try and throw the diffuser down on the ground here. He's not going to be able to get to the kill. Time runs out, and that is going to be Nighthaven Labs 1 for Scars in what was an impressive performance to level this one up 1-1. One, one. Well, they didn't make too many mistakes, and those that they did, Fury struggled to capitalize upon. So a confident victory in the end over on Labs for Scars, and it opens the door wide open for a banging best of three. Yeah, you've just got to feel like that map was kind of already won in the map veto. I think the fact that they brought it, Fury, um, showing us there that it just really isn't one that they should probably be playing. Scars picked it for a reason um, and have just gone a and taken them apart, really. You can see at the bottom there only the one round won back in round three. Other than that, Fury have just been absolutely pummeled. And what sort of effect does that have coming into map three? That's got to be the other question. Yeah, it's always difficult to say. I think that obviously a map like Shelley has a decently different dynamic to, to labs and obviously the scale of the map is quite different but as you sort of alluded to right if your fundamental attacking principles aren't sound they can still be exposed on chalet so fury now need to rest up or refresh and hopefully come back with a refined mindset or this third map. Yeah, they're certainly going to need to find more success on the attack. That much is for sure. We're not going to have to wait too long to see it. We're going to throw it out to a short break and then don't go anywhere because we're coming back for the conclusion of this matchup between Fury and Scars. It's going to be Shallow where we decide who takes it all. And so I think this is going to be more of a challenge coming through from Virtus Pro. Mm. Again, this is a map they've been working on. We know they've been putting in the time. So I hope they've got what it takes. Well, an interesting stat going back from the first map to Skyscraper when we are talking about that aggressive play style from W7M and meeting them on that defensive side and playing that aggressive style. So in that game, there were 14 opening kills. And out of those 14 opening kills, three of those were traded. <laughs> And a lot of those Aubrey were heavily went into W7M's favor, getting in malting and netting, malting in net. Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. They were netting into multi kills. Bang, there so we go. We got there in the end. So W7M, I mean, you learned this from VP that they're going to play a little slower. So yeah. are you going to get aggressive now, like you were in Skyscraper, or are you going to fall back a little bit and kind of play the game that W, I mean, that VP is now playing? Well, that's actually leading into probably the, the final question that I have for Border is, you know, we saw quite a few times VP struggling to enter the building uh, with the aggression yeah. that we were seeing. How do they go about mitigating this? How do they go about diminishing that risk? If I'm in that situation, you make W7M make the wrong play because if they're already meeting you with an aggressive play style, let them peek you. You get that kill, you go up man advantage and keep playing man advantage at that point. 100%, hold your angles, make sure that you're ready for the swings because they are gonna come. It's W7M, they are very, very good at getting aggressive, so you've gotta shut that down. Certainly do, and it's time for us to shut up shop here on the desk when you go across to Xenox and Dez to run you through the final map of Border. Yeah, I'm so glad that we've been able to get here as well. What a pleasure. It's been so much fun working with, with you been. as well. Des and with Ace as well. We've done a little switch of Runic, of course, Guz and, uh, and Ace are over on that B at the moment. We've got the best game. Let's be honest. We go to Border. It's the third map. It's VE along with W7M, the champions, if you will. And it's a 50% prediction split right down the middle.
It is hard to call. We've seen strong maps from both teams. Uh, Skyscraper definitely a little bit more 50-50 on wager. Virtus Pro quite convincingly taking Cafe overall. When it comes into this map, there's still so much to sort of learn and figure out. Virtus Pro did not play this map in 2023 at all. It was a perma ban. It was away from their map pool. They didn't even take a sniff at it. Whereas at this major so far, twice they've played it. This will be the third time. So clearly something they brought into their map pool recently. Whereas on W7M side, a 50% win rate on this map back in 2023. So not the hottest map, not terrible for them, but for a team in their form, maybe you'd expect a bit of a stronger showing here. For the third time, W7M start defense. For the third time, W7M ban Grimm. And for the third time, VP ban Ying. I like to think there's a gentleman's agreement here. They're shaking hands before the game and said, right, you'll ban that, we ban this. Yeah, cool, nice. And then it gets all chaotic on the defensive side of bans because Virtus Pro keep on banning that as army away and JV92 isn't very happy about it. We are one ban away from having basically the same four bands across all of the maps. It's the Valkyrie this time around, though. Oh, they're, right. they're a little bit more flexible with that final defensive yeah. ban. Yeah, they are. So nothing too unexpected there. It's going to play out similar to the rest of the series with those operators being absent on Cafe. We did see the Valk available and it was played. An absolute metric ton is the only way I can describe it. The respect being shown through things like the IQ, at least from W7M, to make sure the Yokai's, the Valk, wasn't able to be too effective. The soul is being picked up here by Herd straight away, though, as we launch into, you guessed it, Armory Archives for our Rock first up. site. I do wonder if uh, we might have only just had a, a bit of a one-off when it comes to attacking side at Siege. In saying that, I think Border statistically is one of the best, if not maybe the best, when it does come to attacking at this tournament thus far. I haven't got the numbers directly in front of me, but I do. that's the, the general feel when it comes to the maps. For me, I think it's Border. Consulate is a little bit better by two. How many maps have we seen in Consulate, though, in terms of this, uh, the sub-sample? Uh, we've seen a few, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's been played for 19 rounds, so yeah, a few times. That's not a lot, actually. Mm, I know, I haven't cast it yet. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you can screw down the maps, apparently. Like 90 yeah, yeah. rounds played plus. It's, yeah. yeah, others have been seen a lot more, but it yeah. has still been played, yes. Yeah, like 97 Five, rounds of, uh, of Border, in fact. Maybe that stat's going back to before the tournament, I don't know. We have seen a lot of maps, to be fair. It's, you know, we're on day three and we've gone through... Uh, Middle how many of best, three? Eight best of threes every day? You know, it does fly, and you do yeah. get a lot of playtime in. Oh, oh, oh Herds! I mean, Herds is starting this map out the way that he started out Skyscraper, absolutely deleting Virtus Pro at the start. Yeah, and probably need as well to do just that for W7M on the defense, because they were quite lackluster on Cafe to begin. Remember, VP winning the first four rounds. So, obviously, for W7M, needing to feel on border, that they've got to get aggressive, try and deny these entry points, somewhat similar to what we saw maybe back on Skyscraper, defensively for W7M. A couple of words coming out in chat as well between the two teams off the back of that initial opening kill from Herds on to Always. Gets rid of the Docker B2, so no logic bombs for the entry for VP, trying to play off of the Montana. Although it's obviously a very different map, I think back to the shape where we had very aggressive holds coming onto this side of the map back on Skyscraper. Exhibition, for example, was really hard for VP to get any kind of control of, and it's looking to be a somewhat similar story. We have KZ in the round waiting area. We've got Nay inside of office for Leapox on these stairs, just keeping Shepard outside of the map. It's a little slowdown momentarily. Hurts, of course, eventually losing his life in response to getting the opening kill. So one for one. Makes it a four versus four. We see the Blackbeard as well from Dan. Mm, he brings out the uh, they know shield. Upstairs. Surely they know that it's yeah, there. They do. But, There's yeah. the pink. If the thing is, they could pinch you from below, but you've got that support from KZ above waiting area as well. So it's not as simple as just, just pushing from below. Lol, it needs a little bit more to it than that. I just feel like they're not really being given the opportunity they need to get this round moving. Final gas bag utilized there by Philippe Hawks, still with over 60 oh. seconds remaining. No oh, oh, oh. kill coming through there from Shepard. Uh, sorry, from Dan. Dan unable down, to maybe. find that kill. A little bit chip, but not enough to see him completely finished off. And that wall reinforced off. That's a really good hold coming out from W7M. And again, I liken it back to Skyscraper. It does feel the same, although there's not been a massive swing kills. They've wasted two minutes, gone one for one. That was exactly what Herds achieved back yep. at the start of Skyscraper. I will say, though, it's still a four versus four here for VP. These are kind of the similarities to, say, a cafe as well. So you can kind of look to the two maps that we played thus far and maybe take elements of both of it here for both teams. Blending it all together. Now, should be able to at least start trying to get something open here. As you hear the Utskaras going through from Pasha. Last 30 seconds, though. 
Confirm the vert below. Start happening. Yeah, confirm that vert below. Then Shepard could maybe go for the backwards plant here on the Montang. That's clearly their win condition. He's That's so what they want though. to achieve. Holding the angle now is going to be Pasha on Pasha the Havana. 20 seconds remaining. Shepard will eventually look to try and turn around. Pasha's going to be the one that Hello. will play behind him. And Shepard is not being go. contested yeah, here. Surely they're going to try and deny this. Nade from below, though. He's underneath with the shotgun. He can blast out the floor. He can Where's stop the this going below? through. They've got to move and do something. Then they've gone for the back corner instead, actually. Five and Nade's not in a spot to be able to deal with this right now. They're letting them get away with it. They found the back. No, they have a Pasha does manage to stick it. The Lee Fox falls and it feels really like they've got away with a bit of murder there. A C4 comes on through. It should be enough. Joystick's got around in here and do something. They're getting the disable going on through. He's found one for himself. He's got to go fast, but it's not going to be fast enough. A crucial shot coming in from KZ and W7M. Claw back round one. There's so much to probably go over in terms of that round. <laughs> Crazy. One of the, balls, uh, the fact that there was no contest down below from VP. That was the biggest issue. That's why they could go for the plant in the doorway behind the Montang. They did a nice job of pivoting to the corner. I thought that was really smart. Really you smart. You know what the issue with that, though, is it's a, a, a lot more difficult to then rub back out. And you also then can't play the doorway and play the balcony. So clearly, yes, nice pivot, but it really wasn't what they wanted. So they needed to try and get someone down below clear out the vert, mm. get control. I thought they were going to necessarily do that. They didn't. They get punished for it. Even despite that, still got the plant down. Still a very fun, lively round, but it is W7M on the board to begin. They really should have to get that downstairs control of things because obviously they never really had control of office. There was this like two minute battle around East stairs that just kept on working against them. Really smart for W7M, I'm hunting to them, really. They were the ones that wasted all that time at the start at the cost of Herds' life. They got the one for one. Certainly no complaints and the Virtus Pro, maybe there has to be that willingness to pivot away that little bit quicker or accept that you are playing a very high risk, high reward game. Infallible, obviously some have struggled more than most, looking mainly at the Korean teams when I say that. <laughs> but even Bliss, who I know you're absolutely torn up by, have put on really good performances time and time again, but just can't quite get over the finish line. Mm. But if nothing else, it shows there are very, very few freebies in this competition. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. No freebie in this series either. Both teams trying to fight for top spot in this group for Group C, a group that many looked at initially as the group of death when it looked at that stacked names of rosters of teams. Joystick trying to get a bit of top East stairs control here for Virtus Pro. Getting inside of buildings has probably been one of their weaknesses a little bit so far in this series. Once they do get in and get into good positions, mm. though, they've been very strong. They look a little bit hesitant at points, I think, as well. And I don't blame them, really. You can't always get enough information on W7M. They punish you when you do try and step in. They got, you know, gunned down so many times back on Sky, just trying to step in. Welcome back to the beach stream of the Six Invitational 2024, where we are right in the midst of a bit of a thriller between Fury and Scars. Fury took map one on Skyscraper. Scars were able to absolutely dominate that even Labs winning 7-1 sending a message that they are here, they know they need a win and they are looking for it right now. We're going to our decider, it's going to be map three, it's going to be Shall it goes. Yeah, can't wait to jump into this third map. I think both teams have shown enough and made a case that they probably deserve a series win here. That said, Scars, I think, in that department probably do just edge out. Labs from them was almost faultless. A 7-1 scoreline, indicative of the dominance that they had. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the highlights there. And, you know, the way that Scars were just sort of bullying Fury at everything they tried to do. Fury opened a Mav wall, you know, a Mav line in a wall. Oh, we'll go and shoot you through it then. You know, it's like, it was just um, painful for Fury, really. As Scars were completely on top, we can see our map stats coming through there. Wreck, top of the pops, 9 and 2. Uh, just almost unstoppable on the KD. Pion actually not taking a death through the whole thing. Um, just a, a rough, rough game. One of those for Fury that you just need to forget and move on. I mean, there's, there's two key stat lines that stand out to me there, right? Obviously the 7-1 scoreline. Yep. Secondary to that is not a single player from Fury had above 100 EPS, right? Yep. So every single player was struggling, right? It's it wasn't average a, every time. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It wasn't a case of like a couple players are popping off and the rest of the team is really struggling and dragging Fury down. Just everyone had a bad day at the office. Clearly Labs is a map that I think they need to go back and probably refine a little bit because... I think just start banning it. Exactly. Because <laughs> against the Falcons, it wasn't thing. amazing either. So if it gets through another veto, I'd be a little you bit gotta concerned. you got to ask questions. Yeah, for yeah, sure. You really got to ask him at that point. Yeah, it was definitely um, a tough one. And the question now, of course, stands, how is that going to impact them going into this third map? They've just been beaten up on Night Haven Labs. No two ways about it. Scars will be carrying a lot of momentum through from that. And a 
again we've got those big questions about attack scars are starting on the attack so you feel like fury need to come out with this big strong start and get as many defensive rounds in the bank as they can yeah for sure i mean fury did have a 7-1 victory against falcons on this map and they did build a lot of that off the back of their defensive round wins. Now, if the graphic is correct and my memory serves me right, they'll be starting defense once more here on Chalet against Scars. So there could be a world in which they do something similar and they lay that foundation nicely and then can try to just sort of sneak across the line with their attacks. Yeah, I think both teams are going to be uh, going to be really desperate to get this one done. So I think we're actually on for what could be a really tense matchup. 50-50 on the social votes. They know as much as we do. It could be a toss of a coin for who comes away with this best of three overall. Wouldn't surprise me to see us even need a couple of extra rounds to decide who wins this one, to be honest. We'll see when we get there. But for the time being, we are going into it everybody's ready the bands are coming in it's fury versus scars on shall we to decide who takes the win well it's six from six for fury every single map they've played thus far at si24 they've taken the docker b off the board bit more flexibility Surely from scars here the same again oh it's the ying <laughs> there we go we've, we've got different bands everybody and the Ying has actually been a pretty impactful operator. I'm surprised we probably didn't see yes. it out on uh, labs as well. Now, defensively, we'll see what uh, sneaks through. Not his army. I presume we'll probably see the Valkyrie taken off. I mean, the impact of the Valk has been mixed. Um, and it really kind of depends on whether or not Fury want to play the IQ. They've been happy to in the past, so they might actually just let it slip through. They do. Solus will play no for the part 75% stay in bounds then. Just the one difference. Split's being swapped out for Ying, um, but otherwise, as we'd expect. I, th I think Solis can be a really impactful operator on Chalet. There's the potential for vertical denial of plants. Um, you know, you can get down in the basement, take a lot of drones out, pop up all over the map. Uh, so I think uh, it's probably quite a good shout. Uh, it does leave other combinations up on the board, of course. Um, I want to touch on something we saw in Night Even Labs. We didn't really get much of a chance to like, really call okay, it out. We did at the time say it was a nice on. play, um, but it's definitely something that people at home watch Watching could, could take away for their own games. Obviously, the vertical nitro, the pre-place, quite often you're going to watch those with cams. You're going to try to have a Valkyrie cam watching it, a default cam, just to see if anybody's in that position. Wow, but it was beautifully placed next to an FNAT mine that was hidden away under a desk. So when anybody's in that radius of the FNAT, the nitro is going to be successful. So it was just some beautiful team play where the Fenry has called it out. Yep, FNAT's activated. Pop the nitro. Boom. Nice, easy kill up in IT. Absolutely loved it. It's something you can definitely take away and try um, trying your own game. No Fenry round one, though. So we'll have to wait. Until we get to, uh, <laughs> we'll have to wait. We'll have it to should. Wait. I wouldn't be surprised if it got played. Definitely not in this uh, current meta. Very popular operator. We prepare ourselves for round one. And if you are just joining us, firstly, why are you not watching W7 MVP? But secondly, we're glad to have Thank you here. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Obviously, you can bring up multi-view. You can watch both at the same time. No shame in that. Heck of a game going on, I believe. Um, but we've got a heck of a game ourselves. We're going to have Pritja just sending the drone out. Um, we've seen it with Yorkeyes quite often, but just using the mozzie drone, uh, the mozzie captured drone in the same way. Send it out, see uh, maybe where that push is coming from. Is there any opportunity for a little run out? Any opportunity to get a little bit cheeky, but won't find anything. So heavy repel game here and diffuse in the hands of Tai Yu on the double window. Probably posturing for a solar hit as like Colin get caught in the cross and Reckon has already vaulted in, eventually traded. Damage already done though. Dark and Crit J both defenders over towards Solar. Fuse are going down as well. Tayu's been able to get in there. So the window being held that's just going to prevent that push back up the stairs. Dark opening up things vertically. Crit J taking damage. It's going to be very difficult for Fury to get themselves back on site here. A smart flash there. If nothing else, it just burns five seconds whilst those effects wear off. Um, and that's all you're looking for. Pion manages to then reposition, get into a better spot and takes the shots onto Crit J. Dark has got it all to do. Manages to down fish like, but it's unlikely that he's going to get much more from here. The diffuser has been planted on half wall. So kind of coming in from the right side. But interestingly, the breach hasn't even been opened. They've just been able to walk straight into site, get into position and put it down. And Tayu, the planter, manages to get the final kill as well. And Rec, they start off as they mean to go on with another big attack, just like they did on Nighthaven Labs. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the trigger point for the round was there necessarily. 
I think it was maybe just a bit of information through bathroom that it was clear because Rick just jumped straight in like Hollis had absolutely no idea. He was pressured from the window. That completely unlocked that position and then... Fury, obviously, with a couple members off site, um, one solo stairs, another through trophy. That retake was never going to be on with the solar repel in play. So that was a concerning start for Fury. But on a positive note, for Stars, really good instance of an opportunistic attack. Yep, absolutely. Just recognizing that space, uh, going in and taking it. And sometimes that is the way to go, especially on showers. You know, some, there is a lot of sort of um, very close access to these sites. You think about Master, you can go straight in through office door from balcony and you're straight on site. Um, so definitely opportunities there. And sometimes it is a, a good idea just to take them. We're just going to have a quick rehost. I think there was just a little uh, technical issue within the game there. So we'll just get everybody fired back into the lobby. Um, and as soon as they're all back in, once we've got it all open back up, we will be back into things. But 1-0 four scars how much do you think that uh, that first round has an impact on fury as well they've just been absolutely battered on that Avon labs scars come in get a really aggressive successful attack it's not just that they sort of ground it out they just rushed in got kills and got the attack and for me i think maybe fury uh, that has a little bit of an effect yeah i mean they're sort of being bullied inside of the server at the yeah. moment and at one point or another if you want to win out this series you need to put the foot down and say we're not going to be bullied we're going to you know, resist this pressure, we're going to stand up, we're going to be able to get around back. And that, yeah, first round did not fulfill me with a lot of hope that that response is going to come anytime soon because Rec was able to literally jump in bathroom and push piano. Like that should just not be allowed no. at all, ever. Yeah, um, there's, there's no way that you can allow that. Yeah, big obvious hole in the defense and Scar's showing very early on. If there's any holes to exploit, they're just, bang, straight away going to push it. They're not going to second guess themselves and especially a player like Rec who's in great form at the moment. I'm a little bit concerned for Fury. Um, this technical pause probably couldn't have come at a better time because it allows them to just rest a little bit, refresh, and um, not allow that momentum to build all that much. Yeah, I agree. The, you know, the last thing that you want at the minute, you, you know, you can't plan these things. They just happen. But um, the last thing that you want is Rex straight back in the server uh, running at you again, you know, because this is the problem. It's not just about the team of Scars, but if you get an individual like Rex who's just getting a couple of kills, starts feeling themselves, comes in and really starts smashing through this game, that can be two, three, four rounds before that slows down and all of a sudden you're four down and, and what do you do? Your back's to the wall and you're in a, a dire position. So, yeah, I'd agree with you. I don't think it's necessarily the worst timed um, for Fury but um, equally it gives them the, the thing with a, a technical pause is as you can see the players aren't allowed to speak to each other they've yeah. just kind of got to sit there um, and it puts them in their thoughts a little bit and they're thinking we've just got run over on Night Haven we've just got run over in round one you know is this going to continue? How we, and, but this is all internalized. It's all within their own thoughts. So it then comes down to how well can those players manage that for themselves to not allow it to, to get too much for them. I feel like a lot of that, though, comes down to mentality because on the, the other side of the coin, if you're a, a player or a team that's super positive and upbeat during these moments, you can be visualizing success, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. Instead of visualizing that negativity. And I think a game like Siege Confidence... It um, tells you which I'd be doing, doesn't it? I'd be, I'd be sat there thinking, oh, I'm going to get smashed I'd be here. doing the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get wrecked here. <laughs> I, I do the same, unfortunately. Too much. And that's only in, that's only in ranked when you're fighting for ELO, not a, not a $3 million prize pool. <laughs> Right, here we go then. We are back. Tech pause sorted. Rehost okay, underway. Be and we oh. are back into things. There's going to be kitchen and dining, which is the site that we saw lined up before we went out. And it is 1-0 to Scars. It is 1-1 overall in the best of three. If you look up at the top right of your screen, our wonderful production team keep you all updated up there. Um, and you can see that Skyscraper was won by Fury. It went into overtime. And then Night Haven Labs was won by Scars which did not go to overtime. It was 7-1 and Scars won it in quick fashion and we found ourselves now on that final map, the decider of Chalet. Round two and Scars certainly picking up where they left off, um, just running over them on the attack so far. We'll see in this round whether they can continue that. Well, a clear demonstration around number one that Scars are going to exploit pockets of space as quickly as possible. So I like the Amaru pick here from Kyun and I presume that they're going to play a pretty similar tactic if they have a read on an entry point. I mean, Solar may be that point of entry as Dark now transitions across. Spots that drone actually captures it. That could be a small little mini game in this round where perhaps Scars have Claymore. thought about going for that, but that will no longer be the case unbeknownst to the defense at the moment. 
Maybe he will forget. Maru ready to go. I wouldn't think so. It would be a blind push as far as I understand. Yeah, it would certainly be a risky one. You just think there's they're just waiting for a bit of information. Bjorn is indeed gonna go. I don't think he gets challenged immediately. Um, but like always does shut yeah, down Tyu yeah, elsewhere. Yeah. Bjorn does manage to get one. Dark onto Washoi. Wreck onto Crit J. We have an absolute flurry of kills. And Fishlight makes sure that Scars come out on top. Three versus two. BG man and I9 are left all alone inside of sight. Top floor is in the possession of Scars. They've got the sledge still. Fishlark is able to do some work here. So now we just need to hit that pause button, I think. Slow it down. Get those verticals open. You're only a minute into the round. You've plenty of time here. Yes, you've been successful at speed, but not everything has to be at 100 miles an hour either. Yep. Take your time. Convert the advantage. Without the retake. Up through if he stairs or through fireplace. The they've got that. enough drones, they should, yeah. they've got Washoi and Tayu, so they should be clear as far as flanks are concerned. If not, there's a big problem. Yep. I-9 under the pump. Makes his way over to BG Man for a hug, but it's probably important that they separate here and create a bit of distance. Potential crossfire opportunity. That wreck finds one. That's his second in the round. And I-9, who's been trying his hardest to find something back through the vert, is now in 1v3. Absolutely great patience being shown by Scars here. Not over-aggressing, not rushing anything. I-9 sees his man can't quite find it, but it will give away his location. I think dropping the nade down, maybe not the best idea there. It took the hands off the gun, and it did mean that Fishlight will be down. Likely to be collected, I would expect there is the possibility, but in fact, Rex says, no, I'm not going to bother picking him up. I'm just going to run down and kill him. And that's going to be I-9 dealt with. Scars get a second consecutive attacking round, and I I'd be concerned as a Fury fan right now because Wreck and the rest of um, Scars looked fantastic there. They didn't over-aggress when they'd got those couple of kills and all of a sudden it's three versus two, still two minutes left on the clock. They did exactly what they should and that was they hit that pause button, they got on the drones, they made sure the flanks were watched, they started doing the verticals, they didn't just go running around chasing kills and that was really well done. Scars 2-0 and looking good. Yeah, a few just aren't keeping pace at the moment. Um, it's been quick and snappy on the entry in the first two rounds, and sure, more resistance in the second round, but they still didn't win enough of those trades out. And then I would also probably say that the remaining defenders, of course, are easier said than done, failed to aggress and trying to disrupt the pause that was made by the attack there. I know they were pre postponed, so it would have been probably a, a few times up at, but at that point in time, they're sitting on the objective in the 2v3, you're not going to achieve anything. So. I think Fury, at the moment, that lack of confidence is really being reflected in the server. To me, Fury feel like they're playing for, for their position in the tournament right now. And, and in reality, they're not. They have a win under their belt. You know, yeah, this isn't ideal. It puts Scars level with them. And, you know, maybe Falcons will get themselves in that mix, you know, at some point as well. But there's a lot more siege to be played yet. And I think, you know, you can't let that sort of pressure get to you because you're going to make your life harder work down the line. You've just got to look at it and say, you know what? We've got plenty more games to play. Let's go out and just play this and try and get the win. If we don't, we don't. But they just seem to be playing like there's a big weight on them at the minute. Um, and maybe, you know, the outcome of this is, is more sort of um, urgent than maybe it is. I mean, it's cliche, and I know players say it all the time in post-match interviews, but it's taking them with a one round at a time approach. Yeah. Just remove the context, remove the pressure, remove what's happened in the last, you know, nine, ten rounds. Just focus on the next. That's exactly what Dark is trying to do with his aggression through lobby. Almost finds fish like, but able to back out. Fish like survives, so two does Dark. Gridlock in play. Looking to probably get some control around the map and then fortify that for Gridlock. It's actually a really good start from Fury, is that because Scars have wanted to play aggressively, they've wanted to get in, they've wanted to, you know, get straight into gunfights, get straight into the mix. So by meeting them at the boundaries like that, you, you're sort of taking that game away from them. And that's what we can see, a minute 30 now, no deaths. Um, Scars are inside the map, but they're not being able to play that same aggressive style. We've still got players up on the top floor here um, that are looking to hold on. They're inside a site, they're over by Solar, they've got everything locked down of Fury. Um, and they feel pretty, pretty comfortable with that at the minute. No EMPs from the attack, but I think horizontally they've been able to deal with that mute gem off the back of a grenade. So the wall will be broken up. Good work. 
from Scars in terms of time. Still over 60 seconds to remain, but EG Man will be holding powerful. Position that he's very familiar with, and one that he played yesterday with quite a bit of success. Obviously, a lot to juggle from that position, but it's a powerful one if the defense can maintain control. We'll show you over towards Trophy. Maybe a potential for him to work through the late round. I was just thinking, well, Shai seemed worried about the run out there, and he had two claymores in pocket. I'm thinking, you know, these two things don't really add up. Well, Shai, um, get yourself off the rappel, get those claymores down, and I'm sure he will probably get back onto that double window because it is such a power position to be able to take people down inside of piano. Tayu manages to find one, R9 onto Rex. This fight has been down, but it's all going. Rex, it's uh, Gaza's way again. Pion in there, able to start putting the diffuser down. Dark is trying to fight for from deep, but there's nothing he can do about it. It was Rushai on the double window rappel that was able to close it out, and that is going to be another round for Scars, 3-0, and it is not looking good for Fury. Yeah, I mean, there was some, you know, contesting of that map control on the boundary, as you mentioned, dark early on, but then I think the breach was far too easy to open up, so that was, you know, unfortunate for the defense, and then the likes of BG Man half all didn't have as much of an impact. Double window repel wasn't contested, so those defenders, you know, deeper towards the objective can't have an impact through office. So it was a tough, tough position that Fury found themselves in. And unsurprisingly, they couldn't fight their way out of it. Scars now three straight on the attack. And that streak of rounds is just continuing from labs. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, if we look at labs and um, how many in a row was it on labs? One, two, three, four, five in a row. So overall, that's now eight in a row. Eight rounds since Fury won one. That's going to start, you know, grinding you down. And I think we're starting to see that. As I said, you can... You, they're just not as competitive as they were um, on that first map of Skyscraper. Uh, Chalet starting to run away from them. You just feel like one or two more rounds will be enough for Scars at this point. If they can get four or five on the attack, can I honestly see this Fury team taking four or five attacks? You know, given what we've seen so far, I've got to honestly say no. Yeah, I mean, Fury have been a very resistant roster in terms of their history. A couple of years ago, they were struggling to win rounds in Apex South, it was out. insane that the turnaround that they've had, but in this isolated context, I'm not too sure they have it in them, but... As I said before, I'm happy to be surprised. That yeah, no, I mean, as a team like, you know, York at the other side and a team like Scars, we know how much work Scars put in. You've said yourself, you know, they absolutely love their siege. Um, you know, I'm sure that they uh, are well prepared coming in here. It's a team that does put a lot of effort in practice, scrims, um, preparation, everything else. You know, they always do everything um, sort of properly, if you will. And so it's it's really starting to sort of show some dividends now um, because in this late stage, they, they are starting to run away with things they're going to be attacking this time onto bar and gaming so it's going to be essential that they clear out that trio of players um crit jbg man and i'm not sure who else was up on the mezzanine it's dark who's playing up there at the minute so that triangle needs to be dealt with so they can get inside of library really so they've got this like on the book they want to use that verticality into sight and so they just need to make sure that they're clearing these out but a minute and a half in and they haven't moved anybody yet yeah, Wreck on the floor is still has four Rotero drones. So I will anticipate, and I would anticipate, that the deployable shield in Mez at least should be dealt with. So too, the one at the top of the staircase. And once those are dealt with, you know, breaking that triangle apart becomes significantly easier. We'll know focusing on the magnets instead. So perhaps indicative that they'll look to clear them with projectiles, but of course they don't have frag grenades, so maybe they'll flash and try and do a smash and grab potentially. But with only 60 seconds to go, I feel like this is the round where Scars have achieved the least at this checkpoint. Yeah, I'd agree. And, you know, I, 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 I mirror the, uh, you know, the question, really, the, the mystery over the throwables. Like, you clear out the magnets, but magnets are fine if it's a flat bank because it'll still have the, the same effect, mostly. Um, Tayu is going to be down. Fishlight does manage to get a kill to open things up, though. Four versus four. Um, but with 39 seconds left on the round, it's going to be very difficult for Scars to go from where they are now to a position where they can win win this. They just need to, to try and brute force it, essentially. And as they do, I9 manages to pick up Washoi and things are starting to fall apart for Scars on this attack. Pion takes an awful lot of damage but does manage to take down BG Man 3 versus 3.
three, but Crit J is able to just do what he does best and start having a little run around, gets himself up main stairs, picks up a down, finishes it with an impact near, drops back down, gets one through the hatch. It's Crit J everywhere at the minute, and that is going to be a final kill for Dark, and Fury managed to stop the reign of terror that was coming in from Scars. Eight rounds in a row they had, but Fury finally put one on the board. Oh, the drought finally comes to an end. But it's almost one of those rounds where I'm like, oh, go for Fury, I'm happy for them. But how much of that was Scars? Because I feel like the U2 clear in particular top was really, really poor and the shield's still standing. It's easy as you'd like for Fury to farm them. Yeah, I don't really know what the plan was there. It was like, yeah, we'll clear out the magnets, which is fine. Clear out the util, yeah. But if all you're going to do is dump flashbangs in, because that's all you've got, or a small, You've got that six flashbangs, just throw them all at once, you'll be fine. Like, one or two will get caught by the magnet. They'll still have the same effect anyway, more than likely, as long as there's line of sight. Um, you know, yeah, it just seemed like Scars maybe made more of the problem than it needed to be. It was, I don't know, they were looking for maybe a more complex solution than they needed. Exactly right, right. and I feel like the other three rounds where they've been largely successful, it's where they didn't overcomplicate yeah, and instead just, just exploited went. the pocket of space with something pretty simple and brute force their way through. Yeah. So it's a weird one. <laughs> we will see what they do in round five. Uh, they've got two more attacking rounds. If they can get a 4 2 or a 5 1 half, I'm sure that Scars will be extremely happy with that before going on to the defense. It's going to be kitchen and dining that they attack on to this time. It was the Amaru push last time that really helped them out. They got into solo, got a couple of kills quickly, um, and were able to use those verticals in a three versus two to lock down Titan, just bully um, I-9 who was left underneath, but they've not brought the Amaru on this time, so I'm expecting something a little bit different. We've got the Baz on wreck, we've got the Thermite of Peon, so maybe try and get in through main lobby, open that double Setting wall, but if they're going to do that, they really need to be clearing out top floor as well. The Scar's posturing through library, and that will be where they spearhead this mining attack, and wreck with pretty free reign to push forward on the glass. I'll be intrigued to see how he plays into that. Of course, has his own smokes now. Which, uh, does. Very self-sufficient. Yeah. Very self-sufficient, his glass. The uh, Twitch drone is just going to take out the denial on that wall and manages to escape as well. Very nicely done from Washoi there. Um, so it does tell us that they are going to be looking for that main lobby breach, as I suggested. Peon will need to breach the office wall first. So the push here is open the office wall. That allows you to push across the top floor and force everybody back into Solarium at best. Um, <laughs> a little bit close there on his own head. Um, and then the Thermite drops down, opens the wall from main lobby, and you look to be basically get in and plant behind the bomb chassis. You don't need to completely clear top floor. You just need to force them back into master bedroom and solarium so that you are safe from that vertical hold above the bomb chassis. And that's what should happen now. Dark should move away and they've got space to get in underneath Learning and plant on that bomb chassis. It must feel good as a caster when you say something and it actually happens. It is nice, isn't it, when it lines <laughs> up and it's like, oh, see, I actually do know something about this game. I know the odd couple of things, don't you worry. I tell you what, though, they stood right on that breach. They're not moving here. I think it's I-9, you know, Gus, that's just standing right next to it. He is. And that's going to be a little bit unexpected. If they're running here with the diffuser, it could well go down in no man's land. But no, Wreck knows exactly what's going on. Picked him up on the thermal scope and takes I-9 down. Well, you mentioned the glass can be very self-sufficient now. Probably the only operator that would have won that fight. Each man the border can see through the smoke himself. So an awkward duel between him and the glass with 35 seconds on the clock. BG man good for two in the round. The nitro on forward and it's a third for BG man. Tayu to respond to try and keep his team alive though in this round, but it won't be enough. We're showing to push through. The 417 in hand, the shots don't land. BG Man has been a menace in this round, but finally shut down. 10 seconds on the clock. He has the diffuser. If he can pluck this, it could make things interesting. Immediately goes for the plant and ducks all the way over at bar. There's a real opportunity here. Well, he is going to complete this. The shots oh! come through. Dark finds his man through the wall. What a shot. There was just a yellow ping of information. And that is Fury clutching that one out. That was closer than maybe it should have been. But again, Scars, I feel like I don't know. There was maybe just a little bit of dither in there again. Once I-9 gets taken out, Peon takes an age to get in and think about getting that diffuser down. And the Warden is able to activate his gadget, throw his nitro and it all just starts falling apart. 
I mean, Dark was in another postcode when that plant was going down, and then he hits that. I tell you it what. It was a great 1v1 clutch from Dark there. There was no messing about on that shot through the wall. Yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> an intriguing round of Siege has been many in this series, but Fury finally starting to build you know, a bit of momentum for themselves. It's back-to-back -back rounds after losing eight straight. It is, um, and that's exactly what they needed, I think. You know, getting one round was great to break the, the streak uh, for Scars, but getting another was almost essential because, A, it does a lot for the scoreboard. It's 3-2 now. They can maybe get a 3-3 half. I'm still not certain it will be enough. I think they've struggled on the attack, but I will... Yeah, Prove me wrong. You know, I hope they do. I always say this, you know, I will be honest yeah, about teams, left. about what I've seen, and I've, I haven't seen enough from Fury to say that they're going to be good on the Chalet oh, attack. I, I think they'll have that problem of stalling out again in certain locations, but come and yeah, prove me yeah. wrong. Get yourself 3-3 on the half and then go and have a good attacking portion. But right now, Scars, they're going to be looking for that fourth attack, I'm certain. They're going to be, that sort of cheeky cam on the bottom of the light there. Um, they're going to be pushing onto the basement, um, which is meaning Scars are going to have a lot to do. You can see we've got at least two players on the mid floor for Fury. Um, so they're going to need to make sure that they're cleared out potentially, although I'm not sure. They're all starting to come snowmobile here. They might just try to push straight in. That breach has been opened really quickly. Yeah, I thought initially that might be the case as well, but not meant to be. A bit more reserved from the scars. And perhaps the feet they're down. Yeah, I feel like at the start, that was really Change quick, snappy, trying to catch Fury off guard. Maybe sensing that Fury was starting to acclimatize to that, so they didn't go for it in the last couple of rounds, but it's been to their demise. And Fury have been locking out these objectives quite Nicely. Rec rotates over the library, so he'll start his push there. Dark, I believe, is the sole roamer here for the defense, and that's confirmed all four remaining defenders on the site. So there'll be a bit of pressure here on Dark to stall out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just depends exactly what Scars choose to do as the round progresses. It looks like they are going to be looking for an alternative to uh, the Snowmobile as well. There's just a little bit of pressure going towards Blue Stairs, for example, but Crit J and Dark are managing to get themselves upstairs. I was going to say after Dark went to pick up that Gooman, I wasn't sure that he was going to continue up the stairs or not, but he has done. So they're working as a pair up there. And I tell you what, if Rek is unaware of this, this could be real trouble for the Thatcher who's working on top floor in library at the minute. Fishlike is with him and it looks like they're paying a bit of attention. They've seen him. This could be really dangerous. They're going to walk into what could be a slaughter here. Key drone feeding vital information to the flank watch of Tayu. They kind of, I feel like Rek, I feel like they just need to go and get them here. They've seen them on the drone. Go and get them. It's a 5v3 then pushing onto site, but with only a minute left, you can't really ignore them because you're going to have to rush into site and you're going to have them coming down on the flank. I mean, the Vogue's got info as well. So yeah. it's a bit of a standoff at the moment. Everyone knows where everyone is, but who's going to make the first move? Shots spread through the wall from Dark. And just like that, he'll run away with Crick. <laughs> There we go. That's going to force them back. Scars now have got a little bit more limited time. They seem very concerned um, about them two roamers. They're very much aware of their presence, um, but it's not going to be easy for them to get into that here. I-9 is going to eat the nid, and he's going to be taken down with Shoy. Peon managing to get a couple of kills apiece. Five versus two as Shoy suddenly is in through the main breach and able to start putting that diffuser yeah, down, which he will stick. Dark and Crit J have made it back to site, but find themselves in gun fights immediately and Crit J brings a Nitro to a gunfight and it's successful manages to get one but will get no more as Rek finds both and that is going to be Scars taking their fourth attacking round it's 4-1 now well we've been questioning when the response was going to come when the counter punch was going to land for Scars and it finally does at the conclusion of the half 4-2 I think they'll settle for that not too bad considering it could have Unraveled a little bit further. I like that. I mean, the yeah, perfect nade nice. onto I-9's feet. He had to move. They had the crossfire established. And unfortunately, also, it just broke apart. I mean, rewinding the clock. Um, there was that huge standoff with information on the top floor. And, you know, both teams showing that they can have discipline when yeah. required. And ultimately, though, in the objective itself, when it came to, to crunch time, Fury didn't have what it took. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Yes, yeah, yeah, slight correction on myself. I called four one at the end. I was doing Fury a disservice. Four two, of course. They picked up the uh, the two rounds in a row. Um, but yeah, we now switch into the second half. Scars onto the defence, and this round is super important to me. I want to see how Fury do on this attack. They're going to be attacking on Tavar and Game, so they are going to have a top four hold to break. Something that they've struggled with a little bit previously, taking too long um, to get in there and taking, you know, turning into a two two and a half minute skirmish over an area that is not the site uh, so we'll see whether Fury can do any better this time around it was um, a nice round from Scars really to just have that explosion into sight and get those couple of kills it really opened things up for him Washoi and Peon through the main breach did a great job for their team and um, to lock it out so good stuff from Scars and they take their rewards into the second half So triple drones here from Fury, rather with the Plunge drones, Flores, with the Vateros, and the Crit J with the Shock drones on Twitch. So the pacing for this round is arguably going to be probably far slower than what we saw from Scars. Nothing inherently wrong with that, but I will say, we've highlighted a couple of times throughout the series that Fury's conversion when it comes to you know, late round pushes on the attack hasn't been great. Something I have to be mindful of. They are chipping away though nicely at this utility. The BPC down. There's obviously going to be Aller mines and Fenrir mines as well that can be dealt with. And provided it's done in an efficient manner, Drew can make up for that later in the round. Yeah, clearing out a lot of utility, uh, doing pretty well so far. The Twitch drone almost taking out the default cam that the Clutch drone was trying to capture. I think there was a little com there of don't shoot it! because I'm capturing it and we want the default cam. Um, so, good work so far. The only criticism that I would have of the Fury attack so far is we're a minute and a half into the round and they're not really established inside of the map. There's only I-9 um, at the moment that is inside. He's being joined by Dark now. Um, so, this is going to start picking up a little bit more pace. They're fine for time. They just need to be aware of it and make sure that they keep the momentum moving. Nitro goes out. Not going to catch its man. I-9 knows that he's being challenged from Mezzanine. So. Can't help but feel that I-9 will be key in this round, but Crick J is pushed all the way through Dining Hallway. BG Man as well to double down for Fury, and Crick J actually pushes up the stairs with the 4-1-7. Now it's Tayu, 1v4 on an island, shotgun in hand. He's not going to win this round, Fury. They're going to respond nicely here. Round 7 should be theirs on the attack. Yeah, and that's exactly what they needed. You know, I'm sure that they will have had question marks in their own mind about their attacks, given how they've gone so far today. But um, they've really done a job when they needed to. That's going to be the first kill for Tayu. He's going to move himself around nicely, but Crit J manages to predict the drop down the hatch. Probably heard it as well and picks up his man. Great kill from him. And that's going to be the first attack going to Fury. Great start for them. The bigger point being there. If you remember, I said, how do they go about clearing that top floor? Do they waste too much time? Do this all out with it and the answer is absolutely not they were able to push in get those kills clear out that top floor Crit J and BG man really did a job for them there and it opened up the round way better from Fury glad to be proved wrong attackers need to locate and defuse tell you what I'm hearing a lot of noise As there's a lot MBR of noise going over on that air street yeah well we it's looking like it's a very close game over on stream A but I tell you what, this one's probably still got legs in it as well, especially if oh. Fury continues this momentum on attack. I said at the beginning I could see us maybe getting a couple of extra rounds, a couple of bonus ones at the end, and it still wouldn't surprise me if that's the case. So to basement we go then for round number eight, and Scar's leaning heavily into Util this time around with the parcel play, as well as the Boyo to stall out space, Legion as well, just like, as a player on top of that, and says going to be some challenges for Fury to deal with. Attackers must locate, They're only going to go with the singular drone specialist this time around with Twitch. Obviously last time we had the uh, Rava and the Flora play. Interestingly enough, we're going to see the Monty brought out. And we've been a little bit critical of how impactful the Monty has actually been, but we'll see whether or not I-9 can use that. Probably in an attempt to obviously shoulder peak like some Fenrir mines, but... Oh, 
I don't, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. Um, you know, Fury, we've seen them get stalled out a little bit. They didn't on that last attack. But, you know, bring the Monty and just try and sort of brute force it a little bit. Go in, you know, make life difficult for them. Uh, they're just going to wait for that to be taken out or take it out himself. There you go. Um, but, yeah, you know, if, if you're struggling and you're stalling out in these little skirmishes on the top floor, for example, bring the Monty and just bully people out of position. Um, well, Shite is going to go out of the door, though. Manages to pick up EG Man and they can't be giving away freebies like that. They can't be allowing them to go on the run out and just pick them off like that but nothing really to stop that happening no claim was um, I don't think there was any no there was none on the board um, you know, no air jabs anything like that you're not really going to put down a track stinger on the outside like that to prevent the run out it wouldn't have stopped it anyway so um, a little bit of a freebie there for Scars well, but this is the exactly power of the Monty creating space beyond to fall wreck placed on an island but still find one Almost a second. Shotgun now out in hand. Finally taken down. Cars with the advantage. Just look, Critch over shooting the body there, but <laughs> going for some vert line of sight. Diffuser needs to be collected here by Fury. Still a bit of time, but probably not the tools to deal with what's ahead of them. The problem that they've got is, as I've said, big fight. No any sight. Still got miles to go to get to Zyte, and they're basically one and a half versus three. Um, you know, I always count that because Monty's only got the pistol. He needs the gun of Crit J really to feed okay, information to, and then Crit J picks up the kills. They've got to work together as a team, and that's going to be very difficult with only having two of them left. The fewer people that you have left alive, when one of them is a Monte, the weaker that Monte becomes. You want a Monte with a fully stacked team around them. So they, yeah, there's well, call out there, there's call out there, there's call. I'm going to pull him into your line of sight. That can't happen when there's just two of you. Um, so this is going to be a very difficult finish now. Well, Scars will dig their heels in on the objective. I nine diffuser in hand. He'll look to push through. Currently in boiler, stalled out though by the canister from Washoi. Crit J takes a little bit of damage from that. Impacts available, now used all up. Another canister deployed. Tayo on the off angle with BPC feeding information to the defense. Can't help but shake the feeling that this will peter out. It does. Scars take round eight. And that will leave them now 5-3 and inching ever closer to a reverse sweep. Let's not forget, Fury took the first map here. Um, so they are in the position of having to fight back from one map down and Scars are doing a fantastic job of it. We're going to have a tactical timeout coming. It's going to be Fury to pull the trigger on that one. Not too much of a surprise as they find themselves 3-5 down and only two rounds away from losing this group stage game at SI24. Well, for Fury, it's about trying to reset here a little bit because, unfortunately, there's that three-round streak has, you know, or that two-round streak has been broken, split apart a little bit here for them. I wonder what they'll be discussing. I think probably if they want to bring the Monty in future rounds, it's going to be a little bit of a talking point. Didn't get as much value from it as they probably would have liked. I think they were probably a, a fraction unlucky to not clear a trophy or part of me a solo a little bit faster, but... As you were mentioning, right, it's all these big fights so far away from the objective. That but. that for me is if I'm if I'm inside of Fury, I'm saying, look, we're taking two, three, four deaths at the opposite side of the map. You know, if we're gonna do that, we might as well take two, three, four deaths inside of sight, trying to actually get something going because otherwise Defender. we're just pushing two v three, two v four come the end. Um, so for me, if I'm Fury, I'm thinking Defender just try and pay a little bit more direct attention to sight, cut out the middleman. Yeah! Well, we prepare ourselves then for the ninth round here between Fury and Scars. Map number three, one apiece. Both of these teams eager to bolster their standing in their respective group. It's day three of SI, so we're eclipsing the halfway point of the group Five stage. And, you know, arguably both of these teams, if things go against Attackers them, could be in a position of elimination. So, an important conclusion. 
and could be. It's going to be kitchen and dining then for round nine, and we will get underway. We've got a top floor presence coming in from Scars, something that Fury will need to deal with. Um, and again, that was something that we saw them struggle with a little bit previously. They did actually really well on bar and game, so they just need more of that sort of energy, really, um, with the way they got in there, got aggressive and got the job done. It was more on uh, Native and Labs that they really struggled to, to clear the map out. But the drones are in. They're just spotting exactly who is where. They know that there are, draw that there are defenders up on the top floor. They saw the feet running past the drone. I'm going to clear out that castle barricade and just start trying to open up. You can see they're very cautious of that potential run out as well, having hit, been hit by it before. That wasn't ideal. I don't think that was exactly where they wanted that. I think the first one caught the, uh, the window for him. Yeah, not quite. Shield set up here from Kewen. Start low. In that closet position. Trap boat in the flames. Falls back. ADS won't catch that. Oh. There's a good counterplay early on here from Fury. And I know inside of the car garage, an opportunity for him to vert. Not up, just to West Main, but also all the way through to bathroom. And wired and the surrounding area. Are oh, you lit up? And it feels like Fury finally are actually peppering players on the side and in key positions instead of just throwing bodies at, you know, one anchor point on the side. Yeah, Scars are uh, actually struggling a little bit here. They're taking a lot of damage along the way. Um, Fury are making easier fights for themselves later in the round. They haven't quite got themselves in and established just yet as much as they might like to, but Critch is holding a nice position inside a trophy there. Dark's trying to work up and just clear this area at the top of Tola Stairs. They need to get that done because it's becoming a bit of a struggle for them at the minute. Blonde's kind of locked in place, but he's happy to just play his life. Two minutes have gone. Fury in danger of that stall out that we've talked about, but R9 manages to get Tayu. Is that going to get things moving? They're just so cautious of the flank from above. Dark tries to push towards side. It's starting to work. BG Man goes in. Wushoy is down but not out. We're effectively four versus two now. Crit J gets another. It's all up to Fish like he has the vertical. How critical can that be? 40 seconds left to go. This should absolutely be a round to Fury. Upside down repel. Surely going to see Fish like just waiting for that noise. Doesn't want to take the peek onto him. It's going to be BG Man who closes him out. And that is another round for Fury. They keep themselves in touch. They're keeping this one close. Yeah, and critically, it's a successful conversion off the back of a tactical timeout for Fury. Which I don't believe it was on... I think it was Skyscraper. Either way, though. Good work from them. Just like, you know, good, clean, fundamental positions to not allow that uh, opportunity to slip and go astray. Protect your so we're going to round 10 then. And it does feel like we're continuing down the narrow road of heading towards an overtime potentially. Mm. The scars, they go over the bedroom and we'll see if they can find comfort. Well, the tight time out on Skyscraper that you mentioned for Fury actually got them three rounds okay, well, on go, the back the of that. So, you know, attackers. if we get the same thing here, that puts them on six and it puts Scars really on the back foot there. Um, but Scars, they're going to head back to Master and it can get difficult to close rounds out at this point. You know, Scars in their mind know, look, you know, if we get one, we're guaranteed overtime. That's something. If we get that opportunity, we've got two rounds then to close it out. Five but it left, sort of it wears it, yeah, I think. You know, you've got three rounds. If we get it, we've got three rounds. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But if we get it now, we've got two rounds. Well, no, if we get it now, we've got one chance. Like, and it just starts wearing down. And but mentally, you really do see that chance sort of slipping away. So we'll see how Scars deal with that. Castle will see an appearance once again for Scars. And we'll see how Fury elect to deal with that. Intriguing composition of their own. I'm really a big fan of the Grim Lion combo if you can pull it off, just because it has the ability to either prevent defenders from retaking space or locks them into a particular position, and you can then look to exploit that. Of course, with the Castle and Crow, though, maybe some of those lines of sight will be obscured, and they'll have to deal with that. Pacing though from Fury has been definitive uh, throughout this half. They have not gone for anything fast, explosive, 
Definitely nothing like what we saw from Scars when they kicked things off. No, no, very much different attacks, but still finding um, success in their own ways. i just underneath at the minute on the book, so we'll have the opportunity to start opening some stuff up. I think he's just um, being cautious at the minute. Seems to be locked into holding an angle. He's just concerned about being pushed, I think, by a defender. But Wishoy is out in Ivy at the minute, just watching the library balcony. Uh, sorry, the bathroom balcony. Fishlight manages to pick up like all this great start for Scars, exactly what they needed and um, the work does start coming from underneath by i9 but can't really dislodge anybody can't find anybody with that skeleton key dark's going to take the opportunity of cover to get on inside may take a little bit of damage from the small canister that was there but i think he just managed to skirt around the edge of it he knows somebody's in the bathtub there comes the fire tayu comes out and gets shut down beautiful from the capital Work from Dark, can Fury snowball this though into a round win? The conditions are set, the plant position opened up, I would presume at this point in time. Just about Fury settling themselves and not letting this opportunity slip. Crit J with the deep drone, info obtained. Okay, Minute on the clock, the and Wachoy responds. Exactly when they needed it as well. Three versus three, Crit J goes in and shows why he's been a top player so far in this series. Managing to get an important kill. 45 seconds left to go. Wrecked low health. Peon with a bit of chip damage. Everybody on the side of Fury at full health and ready for the fight. They're inside a solar and they're thinking about exactly how they can go in and get this diffuser down. Scars are defending at distance now. It is not going to be easy for them. BG Man knows that there could be a peak coming around this corner and he goes for the cover. It allows Crit J to get in and this will almost certainly be a successful plant. They're trying to do something. Beyond moves around. What a kill from Wreck. That's exactly what Scars needed. 2v2. Beyond moving around. Can't find anybody from the bathroom. This could be a problem as Crit J finds his man. One versus two. It's all up to Wreck. We know he's got the capability, but he doesn't really have the hit points. He's going to find one. No, he won't. Crit J shuts him down and Fury draw level. It's 5-5. Five five. Yeah, good attempt there from Scars to keep the end of that round competitive. But Fury with decent composure. I mean, there was a small window there. I was like a little bit scared, but able to close it out. Did a good job. Um, obviously had the condition of getting the plant down in that very specific spot, which is typical for a solar push, and they made it work. Um, almost got timed, but yeah. Got it across the line in the end. That does trigger a timeout in response, though, from Scars, as the score line is drawn five apiece. This is getting very, very tense between these two. Let's not forget, in terms of the overall group, um, you know, they've both shown us some good siege so far. Um, but, you know, in reality, these are teams that, you know, this could be a game that is decisive um, about so maybe not necessarily even who's going to stay or go from the group, but it's going to be some very important seeding potentially. Um, you know, it could be a difference between a second and a third place or a fourth place. Um, you know, if you're Fury, you've already had one win. If you grab another one here, you're on, you know, you're going ahead of other teams. You're doing really well on that point scale. There's only four games to be played. You've won half of them at that point. You guarantee yourself almost that you're going to go through um, and you're starting to look at potentially getting further up table than you might have expected so there's a lot on the um, there's a lot on the outcome of this game for these two teams and at 5-5 five, five, it's absolutely anybody's at the minute on Charlie I don't think we could have had a better map to finish this on they've both really turned up in their own way very very competitive map thus far same couldn't be said when Fury last played this map against the Falcons and I don't say that in a negative light because they won 7-1. Um, as for Scars, though, they did push the Sonics to overtime. Did narrowly fall, though, in the end. Unfortunately, they did get attacked in OT. Only able to play the one defensive round on that occasion. So, but the precinct's been set that this could be very, very close and very, very competitive between the two. It has been so far. Let's see if, though, maybe one of these teams can edge ahead. We go to basement for round number 11, but... An extension set up up of from the defense with that mirror and castle in combination. Immediate attention out towards library then. It's going to be the basement that they're attacking onto. Um, but Fury once again just conscious that they're going to need to clear out the entire map. I think Fion is all the way up on the top floor. There is a presence throughout the map for Scars. Um, you can see there just those red silhouettes just scattered all around the map. Right. 
is indeed up there on the top floor supporting Pion. So, Fury, this is going to be the big test. You've had a couple of good attacks. Um, you've managed to chain a couple of rounds together. How do you go with a full map clearance, which is where we've seen you slow down previously, get caught up in those skirmishes elsewhere in the map? They need to make sure that they don't do that this time. They've got in the map quickly. That's good. They're within a minute, they're working their way across that top floor. Yep, totally agree. It's just about being really efficient in the play here as for Scars. That playing for the clock right inside of Piano at the moment, so keep that in mind. At the moment, he's just dispersing those goo mines around and giving himself some coverage. Jun's down below in Kitchen, and we saw the hat three in fourth, so that position will be tricky to take down as well. I mean, there is a world in which Fury could look to go a little bit more direct, but not in those positions currently. Exothermic does get used up by Lycolis that was on the snowmobile breach. Set play being executed here, I think, from the attack. Flash through the drone hole. Pion will be under a little bit of threat. There's the flash. But I think he's dropped the hatch, and he gets away. I call this looking to possibly push down those main stairs. Um, just going to be a bit aggressive potentially. Wreck is just out there in dining as well. So still really not dealt with this roam. Crit J is going to think about it. Like all this scarpers off elsewhere with the diffuser. So plan is going to be to put it down somewhere else. We can see there's three back on site at the minute. I think a fourth silhouette just crept in at the back there. So it may be only Wreck that is left up on the top floor. Takes a lot of damage. Is shut down by Crit J and that is really good for Fury here. 38 seconds left to go. Like always has the opportunity to get in and think about putting that diffuser down. He's actually just walking through sight. Washoi has been able to take him down. It's put the diffuser down cold. Washoi will be closed down. Essential kill from I-9 there to go in and at least gain access to that diffuser. But with 20 seconds left to go, they're going to have to push through and it's potentially possible for Scars to just hold this from deep and keep them off the diffuser. But no, I-9 has been able to collect it. He's going to be going for the plant. That could have been a slip up from Fury there, but they've managed to rescue it. The Nitro goes out, but at a bad time, Crit J closes him down. Two kills come in, and that is going to be the round locked out for Fury when it looked like they might have thrown it away with 20 seconds to go. I mean, that was an ambitious attempt from like Coles to cross and make it to that I'm smoke. I'm thinking just get it down behind the bin. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I guess maybe they're a little bit of afraid of like a con angle, but an interesting decision. The rest of the team, though, is to play clean up crew. Even. <laughs> Even worse, they'd been firing at Wushoi. They knew he was there, so he, he went for the gunfight with Wushoi, and you've got the diffuser in your hands. Let somebody else go in and take the gunfight. Okay, um, but either way, it worked out. You know, one way or another, they got the job done. Fury will have the series point opportunity, but they will only get one bite at this cherry. That said, just like they did on Skyscraper, they called a tactical timeout. They took three rounds in a row, and they make it one better and make it four. Well, we'll have to wait and see if that comes into fruition. Go over to Bar Games for the final round of regulation. The sense initially teased, but a six pick, or oh, pardon me, an attacker re pick on to the floor is in combination with the Brava. So it's a triple drone lineup in here from the attack of the floor as Twitch. We've seen this in the past from Fury, and I was a little bit concerned that it may make their attack pace too slow. I believe, though, they were able to flip that narrative. So we'll see if they can do it once more. Just a lot of caution being paid. There hasn't really been any spawn peaks that I can think of in this um, whole game, pretty actually. timid. You know, pretty it's been timid. pretty rare um, that they've been getting up to the windows and having a look out. But still, um, you know, I like oh. to see. Oh, almost got the body block, but was unsuccessful. The mirror window will get dropped out, and that is going to be a big point to the credit of Fury there. Close deployed. Yep, small little win there for Fury, but could be the influential part of the round, especially if they commit to the room clear as it weakens that dining room position. Velk's still in the hands of Bushoi, and he gets one in the fireplace position, again, to just aid the team in holding that. Right with a deployable shield facing into library. BG man on the floor is tasked to uh, deal with that at some point. There's a couple of different challenges being thrown at the attack here, and I think for Fury it's about prioritizing the right things, because that's in the past sometimes been a bit of an issue for them. If they can align properly this time around, it should be the case that they can clear this. 
Yeah, that's it. They just get locked in, like you say, sometimes to, to fights that they don't necessarily need to. But um, they've still got one positioned on library stairs. Uh, the utility is going in now to try and allow the push to come from both sides. I9's got mezzanine, which is a, a big one here. It's allowing them into library. So Fury have got the verticals as well. They can start to really pressure down onto site. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate for I9 that he's not noticed this Valkyrie camera at the minute. He's going to be feeding his location, but Crit J, one star player, takes out another wreck, is going to hit the deck. 11 and 9 will not be improved and he might not get another chance here if his team can't win out this round. Crit J going well, 14 and 6, really carrying the team towards victory. So 60 seconds then, and Fury convert this advantage into a map win, a series of victory over Scars, fighting valiantly for Japan. Damage dealt. A kill not found yet. BG Man continues to hold this flank. Fish like needs to be so careful. Yun does find a kill. It's one for I9 and Dark as well, though. It's looking good for Fury at this point. As you say, a double coming in there with Shoilo help as well. It's going to be Tayu that really needs to stand up tall here as Wushoi is taken down by Dark. Four versus one, and this is almost sorted. And there we go, I9 with the final kill. And Fury, despite taking an absolute beating on that Haven Labs, they come back and fight fantastically well on Shalini to get themselves a well-earned victory. 2-1 over Scars. And you can see they're thrilled with that result. They really had to grind away at this game. There were so many points in time where I was doubtful. I feel like you were doubtful yeah, as well. 100%. But Fury, they kept that belief alive and it really served them well. Let's not forget that the start of Chalet went 3-0 to Scars. They had eight rounds in a row between Night Haven Labs and the beginning of this map. They were 3-0 up. Fury were on the back foot massively and they have dug deep and found some reserve of mental fortitude to be able to battle their way back into it. And genuinely, I am really impressed with that Fury performance towards the end. They struggled on the attack at Skyscraper at times. They were a little bit too slow. They were getting hung up on the wrong things. Um, you know, Night Haven, it was non-existent was their attack. And they had to come and do it here on Chalet. And they got the job done. And they looked completely different. They recognized those problems. They dealt with them. They improved upon them. And overall, really, really impressed. Definitely, though, a sad story at the moment, though. Tough for, for Scars. scars. Tough mean, for Scars. The sole representatives from Japan at this particular okay. event. They have a huge region you know, behind them. I'm sure supporting from home, but this didn't quite click today, didn't quite go their way. Obviously, dominant performance on map number two, but it just didn't translate well enough into Chalet. And once Fury got fired back up again, Scars couldn't rise to the challenge. And now they find themselves stranded at the bottom of the group, no points, um, or one point, I guess, from this particular loss. And it's gonna be a tough one to rebound from. Yeah, it really is. We're seeing some of the highlights coming through here across all three maps. And there's been some big moments, some beautiful kills, and you know, what better time for me to say that than that absolute beauty that I9 tries to out of the map hole there. But yeah, overall, it's been a back and forth game. We never really knew who was gonna win. It was absolutely anybody's. Overtime would not have surprised me in the slightest on Shally. And like you say, you kind of feel for Scars and you look at it and think, would overtime have maybe been a fairer way to decide this? I don't know. Um, but Fury, they certainly are to the rewards that they got, so well played to them as well. They're going to be looking forward now. They've got two wins on the board. That's, you know, not necessarily mathematically, but it's going to go a long way towards putting them through um, from the group stages. Two games, two wins, good start for them, um, and it could be a really good platform for Fury to build on. I tell you what, that SARS Falcons game on the final day is going to be now, doesn't it? very, very intriguing, considering obviously Falcons won a full strength of game one, then tired from travel game two. They'll be raring and ready to go for that match, so I think Scars will have to probably play it at their best if they want to survive this group. Yeah, I think you're right. It's going to be an absolute classic um, on that final day. And, uh, you know, that's assuming that Scars don't get anything else, you know, somewhere else as well. It's possible that they turn a result. They've shown us some good siege today, you know, get Scars on that even and see what I think I know I might be happy with that they're nearly taking the back drop out we'll let them off it was a good one jeez they almost just broke the set it but, was a good uh, one yeah understandable and look crit j highlight player 142 eps wreck though equally up to the challenge of a 133 but 
Again, towards the tail end, they just couldn't quite hold their own. 7-5, obviously a close result. A best of one, right? You'd walk away from this and say we've gone either way and probably did deserve yeah. overtime, but in the best of three, Fury just too good and having that resilience to bounce back from, I think, as you mentioned, that critical eight-round streak. They broke that so and they tough. never looked back. So tough to turn that around. You cannot overstate it. And the fact that it's carried from one map to another as well, um, you know, really must leave the players feeling like, what can we do here? It's not, you know, a point where it's all on native and you can just sort of think, yeah, we don't like this map, it's fine. But when it carries on on the next, you're thinking maybe it's not down to the map. We've got a summary there for the entire series. Crit J, you called him out beforehand right at the start of the match and he's delivered for you. There goes, he's turned up and he's the top man, the MVP. Overall, 33 and 20, plus 13, he's had a great game. Yeah, he sure did. Um, obviously, like Colas as well with a couple plants, he had you know, a standout round to close out uh, Skyscraper as well. Um, so acknowledging his performance inside of the server as well. But again, for Scars, it just didn't quite connect today. And I think they a look back at that Chalet result and be disappointed and scratching their heads at how did we let such a golden opportunity slip away. And now they'll have to reset, right? They've obviously got loss coming up. And if yeah. they don't get any points there, then it really sets the stage for the Falcons game to be a do or die. Yeah, I don't, it won't be an easy game against loss, but the way that they've played, I think it is doable for them. Um, we can have a look at our standings for the group and see how that leaves us points wise. Um, of course, their scars now just sitting on the one point loss getting themselves on four fury all the way up to six um, and sat in second place they are looking good at the minute um, so yeah the battle at the bottom really coming down to scars and Vulcans probably in the next few days well fury sonics tomorrow is there Big a game. world in which fury could maybe take down sonics and fight for first place i mean it's probably a little bit of a stretch i'm but... gonna say maybe not yeah. uh, i don't know it, well if they attack the way they did in the last few rounds of shall we, maybe they can get something if they attack like they did earlier on getting caught up in the you know the sort of swamp of skirmishes elsewhere then it's gonna be tough for them yeah i think the sonics probably have this group in the bag and for the other four, it's going to be a matter of survival. It is. Um, that's going to do it for me and you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure sitting next to you and casting. It's one that I've looked forward to for a long time, and it's been nice to have the opportunity. So thank you. Thank you to our teams, Fury and Scars as well. Don't go anywhere. We've got more games to come up. And we're just before the short break. We've also got the Intel player of the game. So check that out. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds left. Ah! 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 Ah!